Hi, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street and a brand new week. It's Monday and we are raring to go. I hope you're really well today. It's National Cat Day. Yes, if you've got a gorgeous picture of your cat or cats, do please send them into the studio, won't you? Usual address and uh, it would be wonderful to see your feline friends, especially if they help you craft. Um, if you don't know the address, it's studio at sewingstreet.com. Be fab to see your gorgeous kitties. Now then, um, let's start with our early bird. Now our early bird is absolutely gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> my personal favorite brand of thread, Gutterman. Um, it's a Gutterman thread pack. Uh, now then, what you've got in here are 10 beautiful, beautiful shades of Sew All Thread. Now, Sew All Thread is the one I use for pretty much all of my sewing, my piecing, my applique. I do a lot of uh, machine quilting using Sew All Thread as well. It comes in such a beautiful array of colours. You've got 10 different colours in there, but you've also got 10 bobbin clips, and I'll, I'll show you what they are in uh, just a sec. Let's grab the colours out. They're a wonderfully sort of floral variety of colours, these. And you get 10 uh, 100 metre reels. Um, now then, I might not know the exact colours, but I'll just make them up as I go along. There's white, there's baby pink, there's azalea, I'm going to call that azalea, cardinal, um, merlot, I'm going to call this merlot a really deep burgundy. Um, I'm going to call this Seville. You, you know where I'm going with that. Uh, golden. Then there's a lovely pastel yellow. There's a beautiful leaf green and then a lovely light aqua. So really beautiful, almost kind of a shabby chic or floral applique kind of range. Then you've also got 10 bobbin mates. I call them bobbin mates anyway. They call them bobbin clips. Now then, let me show you what you do. I'll just grab a bobbin. Easier said than done. Okay, right, so what you do is you have your bobbin. I'm sorry this isn't the same colour, but um, what you do then is you push this clip through your bobbin. So if you wind your bobbin up with the same colour, as the actual um, reel of thread. And then what you would do, I'll push it through the other end, you do it the other end really, but you push it through like that. So then you can store your reel of thread with your matching bobbin, keep them together. I think that's super clever. Now then, uh, you get 10 of those to correspond with the 10 reels of thread. Now, <coughs> let's talk about price. Regular price, 18.99. Super price. I'd pay that for 10 reels of Gutterman thread, but it's our, our early birds, it's 14 99 So if I told you that uh, £1.49 per reel of thread, that would be a great price for Gutterman so or 100 metre thread. Um, I'm hoping we might, can we do a price comparison? Uh, normal price for 100 metre Gutterman thread. Um, but you're also getting those 10 bobbin mates. Um, really, really useful those. Absolutely brill. Um, grab yours while you can. It's a really lovely range of colours. Love, love, love these pinks, reds and burgundies. And then you've got these lovely soft pastel aqua and green, a couple of shades of yellow and orange and that white as well. Do some really lovely floral applique. We've got floral applique coming up with Debbie Harris in a little while, so um, that would be quite useful. Um, and also these really cool bobbin mates. Normally you'd buy these separately. Um, you, you can buy these separately, but a really useful thing to have. Um, it shows them really nicely actually in action on the back of the box. Everything's really nicely packaged too, isn't it? Very giftable. Make a lovely Christmas gift. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to put presents away now. Yeah, Director Charlie, he's starting putting presents away. Don't get me anything big, Charlie. It'll just be embarrassing, you know, just something small and expensive. That's all I ask. 
Yes. Now, Charlie had a little trip down to London last week, director Charlie. You know, Charlie, he's recently discovered sewing and he's getting into it in a big way. Went to London. Where was the first place he went? Where did he have to go? Liberty. You guessed it. Absolutely loved it. We love our Liberty here. A few good mornings to say as well. Morning, Mo. Mo says, morning, Stuart. Looking forward to a lovely show. Well, fingers crossed I'll do my best. And um, we have got some really, really lovely fabrics uh, and projects coming up in today's show. But um, keep going through for your gorgeous early bird there. You're getting 10 100 metre reels of Gutman Sew All thread. It's a polyester thread. It's my favourite thread to use for piecing, applique, machine quilting. It's a really great all rounder. You're also getting those 10 bobbin mates that are going to hold your bobbin filled with the same colour thread with your reel of thread. They're absolutely brilliant and, of course, reusable. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Now, Technically, that's our early bird, okay? But we have also got another little special deal for you this morning. Our uh, producer, Ben, has snaffled us a little extra. Now, Corbond Scissors, I've worked with Corbond for a few years now, lovely company. They make some great sewing notions. And what you've got here is a set of three scissors. You've got dressmaking, precision dressmaking shears. They're a nine inch blade. You've got craft scissors. Again, you can still use these for fabrics, not just for, for paper, but a smaller size. And then you've got the needlework scissors. So the short, fine, they're a four inch blade there. Now, all three pairs of scissors have a lovely soft grip handle. Um, they're ambidextrous too, so they're going to give you comfort whether you're left-handed or right-handed, um, and really super sharp uh, blades, really super sharp blades that are going to give you a great cut every single time. Now those three pairs of scissors together should normally be $19.99, but today we're going to crash the price and we're going to do them for $14.99. That's amazing. I mean, definitely, definitely, I would say always you want to pay at least £10 for a pair of dressmaking scissors and actually, you know, up to £20. Um, none of us should bulk at the idea of paying £20 for a pair of decent scissors. But these ones, you're getting this size, you're getting the middle size and the small embroidery scissors for £14.99. Again, very, very giftable, either together or separate them out. Kath's got in touch. Morning, Stuart. Could you please wish Jill Parkinson a very, very happy birthday for today? Jill, mwah! happy birthday, my darling. Have a fabulous day. Take the whole month, I do. Happy birthday. Oh, that's fab. And of course, it's National Cat Day. So if you've got a gorgeous photo of your feline friends, do send them into the studio, studio at sewingstreet.com. We'd love to show some pictures of your cats. So one early bird, the Gutterman 10 thread box with 10 bobbin mates, but also that fantastic deal on not one but three pairs of scissors. You've got dressmaking scissors, nine inch, you've got your craft scissors, seven inch, and your needlework scissors, four inch set. Uh, absolutely brilliant. From Corbond, a brilliant brand, absolutely global brand um, of sewing notions, threads, yarns, uh, many, many Corbon notions in my toolbox, including the toolbox, actually. They make some brilliant, brilliant storage. Um, great deal on scissors today. Oh, we've got a picture of a cat. Jolly good. Yay! You don't let me down. Hi, Sewing Street. This is my cat, Tuna. I love the name. Looking forward to seeing all the shows today as I'm on a day off. Amanda, who's in Tameside. Oh, look at Tuna. They always find the spot, don't they? Ha <laughs> ha, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, sunny spot. I love it. All right, let's look at the menu and see what we've got coming up today. 
Now then, first of all, at 8 a.m., we've got the brand new launch of Moda Sunflower Dreamscapes. This is beautiful. You might have seen the quilt hanging behind me that I made. Uh, I'm going to talk you through that, show you the fabrics. They are absolutely gorgeous from a brand new Moda designer called Ira Kennedy. Now then, at 9 o'clock, or oh, I should say too, in 8 a.m., I'm going to be showing you how to make a, an expanding shopping bag using those fabrics. Um, it's a pattern from my book, Bags for Life. Now then, 9 a.m., it's the Country Garden Wall Hanging with Debbie Harris. Beautiful wall hanging, this. It combines uh, easy piecing, um, gorgeous kind of uh, freeform stars, and also some lovely free motion applique. Uh, really nice project, that. Now then, at 10 a.m., we've got quilting tools. Um, I'll be showing you some creative grids rulers like the log cabin trim tool and also the easy flying geese and half square and quarter square triangle ruler, which is my new favorite. Love it. Now then, 11 a.m., it's the Moda Promenade Fabric Collection. Deb is back with a gorgeous project and uh, really, really pretty fabric range that I know you're going to enjoy that. And then at 12 o'clock, we're heading to Yarn Lane. Deb is coming with me and it's all about granny squares and crochet. And we've got a beautiful rainbow bundle of fabric. <clears throat> now then. Okay, remember, if you want to watch us online, it's easy peasy to do. This is what you need to do. Uh, if you go to www.sewingstreet.com and then click on watch live. Now you can send a message to the studio. That's really easy. Oh, oh, honestly, Ben, what do you like? Um, then there's the early bird. $14.99, amazing value for that beautiful thread collection. Then if you scroll down, you'll see today's show deals. That's everything that we've already played on air. And then on the right hand side, you've got pre-order. If you click there, it's everything that's coming up. <coughs> we've got those beautiful Ira Kennedy fabrics, the Sunflower Dreamscapes, and that gorgeous panel. Did you see that? It is fabulous. We've got Moda Midnight in the Garden fabrics as well in this hour. If you want to grab some, go on pre-order, get yours. We've got Bags for Life. We've got Bags for Life, all signed copies. Uh, then we've got Debbie Harris's gorgeous garden applique wall hanging. We've got the Great Brother FS250. <coughs> some lovely tools, rotating cutting mats, some fusible sprays. We've got Odicoat. I don't know if we've still got the double-sided tape. Oh, anyway, there's my favourite flying geese ruler. Uh, we've got Bosel in our form, another of my absolute hero products. We've got fusible interfacing. Uh, we've got now great storage bags, the Oxford Fabric Craft Bag in forest green or navy. Love this bag. I'll show you this a little bit later. I think it's a really super little bag. Then you've got the Moda Promenade fabrics. Debbie Harris will be showing us a gorgeous project using those. Ever so pretty, romantic. You're getting half a metre free if you buy the bundle. And then at Yarn Lane, we've got some gorgeous uh, rainbow yarn selections. We've also got some needles and hooks. Should be a great morning. Now then, now then, now then now. Let's get started. Let's get started. And I'm going to grab the Sunflower Dreamscapes fabric but I kind of want to start by just stepping back and having a little look at this quilt because um, I want to just talk you through this. Now I was sent these fabrics and they're from a brand new designer for Moda who's called Ira Kennedy. Now Ira, um, he is an artist, a painter who lives in Texas um, and he <coughs> specialises in paintings which definitely have a sort of an Aboriginal dot painting um, influence. There's Ira with one of his paintings. How superb is that? Um, kind of impressionistic. It's a little bit of a nod towards Van Gogh as well, isn't there? That's very quilty. I wouldn't be surprised if that gets turned into a panel in the very near future. Isn't that beautiful? Just lovely. So what Moda have done with Ira is to team up and 
interpret his paintings into fabric and this is the first range called Sunflower Dreamscapes. Now what I've used here is I've used a panel, this is actually a reproduction of one of Ira's paintings. So the panel is the centre part and it's a really fabulous size as well, it's, it's um, the width of fabric by just slightly under a metre, so it's a really, really good size. And the printing really does go right up to the edge. This is amazing, it's been so popular on pre-order. Now, I wanted to make up a quilt using this, something simple that would really show off the panel, but I'm gonna be honest with you, in my heart, what I wanted to do with that panel was start cutting into it. I actually wanted to cut it into irregular, squares, rectangles, kind of split it apart and then rejoin it, maybe with sashings, maybe with some piecing or some sashing and piecing and kind of just fragment it um, and then make that up into a quilt. I also think you could use sections of this in bag making. You could use a panel to make a bag. Wouldn't that be delicious? And then you just need maybe a half a meter of perhaps two other fabrics to line it. Maybe just a bit of contrast piping in the seams would be knockout. But what I did was cut the panel down just into a nice easy size. It's printed very straight, which is always a boon. And then I used a coordinating fabric. This first border, check this out. Do you see how it ombres from, from like really dark navies and there's lots of deep sort of oranges and golds in there, but then it ombres down into those lighter tones, a little bit more lilacs, and then it goes really sort of soft and pale towards the bottom. So what I did was I just cut out four strips of that and I just kind of kept the dark here in this corner and in this opposite corner and then the lights. So that was a two and a half inch cut, two inch finished. Then the next border, I used another of the coordinates, just a one inch finished border, one and a half inch cut. So that was nice and easy. And it's such a beautiful, intense sort of set of oranges there beautiful fabric it worked really well together and then check out this fabric in the border how amazing is that just beautiful now this the outer borders is a little bit bigger than the full width of the fabric and i didn't want to have to join the fabric so what i did was i used a couple of the other coordinates to create some simple half square triangles. So I didn't want them to be too noticeable. I kind of wanted them to be sort of blended. So I use as a sunflower print, and then this is the like the border print I've used, but in orange, um, and made those. Just adds a little extra detail. And then I used the light blue coordinate for the binding. Anyway, let me show you, four inch border by the way, that final border. Let me show you these fabrics. <gasps> now I often get excited when I get sent fabrics but when I got sent these through I thought oh now this is really rather special it's juicy isn't it it's so juicy and sort of vibrant and painterly now to start off with let me show you the um, panel And like I say, it's really kind of good right up to the edge. It's twelve ninety nine, and there is the panel. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely gorgeous. And I like the fact that you've got this sort of blue bleed line at the edge. It's only about half an inch wide, but um, it just makes cutting it out really easy because actually I included a tiny bit of that in my panel. It's not a problem. And then at the top and bottom, the design actually goes right up into the um, selvage. Yeah, stunning, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So that's the panel. Really love that. So many creative ways you can use that. Think about maybe doing something like um, attic windows. Yeah, that would be really cool. And then you could use something like maybe the two blues or maybe use something like these together to create the light and dark sides of the attic windows. Anyway, let me show you the mega bundle. So here's that border print. I mean, straight away, hello, lovely. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful cut into a border, but check that out. Isn't that incredible? It's really beautiful fabric, really beautiful fabric. And it's so different. 
I think, you know, we know and love Moda. We know and love Moda for creating things like, um, you know, florals, French General, Three Sisters, and they're all beautiful florals. I think for a long time I thought that was all Moda did, but they do some really, really exciting painterly fabrics. Now then, let me show you this next one. This is the Sunflowers. We're we doing half by the half meter as well as we go, awesome. This is GS89, but this is part of the Mega Bundle. Um, and I'm gonna use this for my bag, but isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, we haven't got a mega bundle. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, right, so everything's by the half meter. That kind of makes things easier. Now then, this next one is XI05. This is lush. Yeah, kind of Moroccan tiled floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful and some gorgeous opportunities for fussy cutting there as well. And not just this shape, this clamshell shape, but things like diamonds and triangles. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely stunning. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Just um, having a quick look on Facebook. Now, Princess Maya, this can't be today's live, surely. We had this the other day. Threads, did you? That's our early bird. Our early bird is the Gutterman threads. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. This next one's gorgeous, BL94. <clears throat> this is fab, isn't it? So exciting. Absolutely beautiful fabric and again looks amazing as a large piece of fabric but then something like as a border or a binding yeah that's really stunning isn't it mm. Loving it, loving it. I think we're going to be seeing lots of fabrics from Ira. Uh, now then, next up, this is a gorgeous coordinate, XJ14. Now this is the one that I used for that first narrow border, a second narrow border rather. This is that really, really deep, intense, gorgeous, fiery oranges. Very detailed, fab, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. So that's that. Now we also have an orange version of that, sort of lighter and again, really lovely. Do you need the code for that? You got it. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, but so vibrant and all those different shades in there as well. And it really just helps to add sort of extra movement and excitement into your work. Um, Ira Kennedy is really worth Googling, by the way, and seeing some of his paintings. Some of his inspired by Australia are just, look at that one. I just want to, yeah, use more of his fabrics. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, now then, a question. Good morning, Stuart. How much fabric would be needed for the inner blue border, please? This one here, half a metre. So what I was sent the panel and then half a metre cuts of all the fabrics. So nothing in that quilt needs more than half a metre. And actually, to be honest with you, I had leftovers of all of the fabrics, you know, some of them less than others, of course. This, this outer yellow border, I didn't have much left of that, but I had a few little bits and bobs. Um, same with the binding, but really nice and quick and easy. And did you see how I quilted it too? I was thinking, what can I do? How can I quilt this? And, um, and then I thought, well, flowers. What do flowers need? Flowers need rain. They need rain. And I just so happen to have a quilting pattern, which is raindrops. <laughs> so it's all quilted with raindrops, kind of diagonal slanting raindrops. But you could just as easily cross hatch this and that would look really stunning. Now then, a couple of, these are delish, look at these two. Mm, mm, mm. Let's do the green first. Now I didn't use the green in any, I wanted to, goodness me, but I just uh, 
you know, I had to rein myself in. But that is absolutely delish, isn't it? Absolutely delicious. And you've got those lots of different shades of green. You've got some golden yellow. You've got a little bit of blue in there as well. I think this would be amazing for landscape quilting as well, if you like doing that sort of thing, or you want to build up a kind of picture. But also it's just really, really beautiful fabric. Another message. Good morning, lovely Stuart. I was sewing your trolley bag for hubby's car yesterday. Fab decided to change my needle. Need I say more? Decided to change my needle. Did I remind you yesterday? We were doing needles yesterday. <laughs> I talked about how important it was to change the needle. Now then, yellow. This is what I used for the outer border on my quilt that's hanging behind. Again, it's like gorgeous, sort of like ripe corn blowing in the wind, isn't it? You know that song by Sting, Fields of Gold? It's one of my karaoke numbers, by the way. It's one of my karaoke numbers, that Fields of Gold. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's never a dry eye in the house. Everyone's crying, get off, stop it. We can't take this anymore. <laughs> Two fabrics to finish with these gorgeous blues. Now I use the light blue for the binding. I was toying with the idea of using the darker and actually, one thing I did think about doing was using the light blue on two sides and the dark blue on two sides. Now, if you're going to do that, normally I do mitered corners, but if you're going to do like different colours on each side or two different colours, then what you want to do is do like folded um, corners. If you've never seen that before, I'll have to do a little demo of that, but it's just kind of like straight binding without mitered corners. Anyway, let's go light blue first. This is the one I used for the binding on my quilt. Isn't that gorgeous? And again, you know, these are not, don't think of these as tone on tones or blenders. These are totally integral to the design. When I look at the quilt that I made, each individual element adds so much. That gorgeous ombre border, of course. I mean, I think that one's gonna sell out. It's so beautiful. But then this fabric here, there's no way that that's a blender. That is so important to the overall design and really frames everything, makes the panel pop. When you take notice of that, you can't not see it then, can you? And then that beautiful yellow border in the outside and the blue binding just kind of brings everything together. <clears throat> now then, last fabric in this range is SP74. This is that gorgeous, intense, deep sapphire blue. Mmm. Yeah, both of those fabrics kind of remind me, you know, the David Hockney painting the, of the swimming pool, the bright blue swimming pool, kind of made me think of that. It's that intense blue, isn't it? That I'm on holiday blue. Just gorgeous. So those are the 10 fabrics in the new Sunflower Dreamscapes collection from Ira Kennedy. All of them really beautiful. Now, um, if I just break this down into what I used for my quilt, it was the panel and then it was the stripe, the sunflowers, the orange, the yellow, the blue and that one. So those were the ones I used for my quilt and I had half meters of everything plus the panel. But as I say, I could quite easily have used these in place of anything really. This would have substituted really nicely here. This would have substituted here. You could have had the green board around the outside. I mean, let me just hold that up and show you how that would look. This is what I do in shops as well. <laughs> you know, that is lovely, isn't it? So that would give it a fresher look. That would really kind of freshen the whole thing up. And that might fit in better with your decor. If you were going to use this, you could maybe use the blue as the narrow 
border as well you know, kind of mix and match <coughs> I think that's where speaking as a, as a designer now having all the fabrics together all of them where I can audition and I can try out different things I mean if you like my version you can repeat my version very very easily um, but it is lovely when you've got all the fabrics to play with now then thought it'd be nice to have a little demo with the fabrics so let me grab now then I'm using bags for life bags for life yeah sewing book of 2021 this was voted sewing book of the year very pleased with that so um, I'm gonna be working on the expanding shopping bag okay um, this is typical shopping for me gorgeous bread some salad and a bottle of wine do you know I can't tell you it took us about an hour and a half to put things in that bag and make it stand up and look right because of course you can imagine can't you there's no way that bottle of wine is going all the way down to the bottom it was somewhere about here and there was a jumper in there and old bits and bobs and you know to make things look nice for photography it is not easy anyway <laughs> let's make a start on this bag okay so it's a really nice easy one this so I'm using the sunflower print fabric for the bottom so let me just tell you that all of the fabrics that I'm using <coughs> for this bag were actually fabrics that were left over from my half meters so I've got here we go this would be nice for a shirt by the way wouldn't it um, so this is the bottom of the bag this is the top of the bag yeah and again I'm just using leftovers now now um, I also need and I had it a second ago and now I'm looking thinking where's it gone there was a little pack of elastic has it dropped off the edge of the table yes it has of course it has thank you the elastic please right then marvelous right then so this little pack of elastic you can get this from sewing streets this is half inch elastic so I just want a six inch piece of elastic so let me measure that out six inches there we go right so I've got my little piece of elastic there it is and then I'm going to find the center part of the bag and just put a little crease now then double the elastic up and then I'm just going to base that in place on the lower part of the bag. Okay. Now I'm using the Brother FS250 for this. And I'm just going to sew backwards and forwards over that elastic just a couple of times just to make it nice and secure. All right. Okay, so that's in place and that's all basted. Now what I'm going to do is flip the top edge of the bag down and do you know what? I'm going to knock myself out and grab some pins. I'm going to do it proper today. I'm all saying you should pin. So let's be a good example for once in my miserable life. <laughs> okay, right, pins are in place. Now then I'm going to use a quarter inch seam so that is stitch number 46 with the regular J foot. Okay, and let's sew. So quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now this bag is unlined. You could line it if you wanted to, but to be honest with you, the point of the bag is that it's supposed to be something you can roll up, fold up, shove in your pocket, or, um, you know, in the glove compartment of the car or something like that so you don't really want to make it bulky um, when it's not really necessary okay so that's been added in and you'll see there's that little loop of elastic uh, just trapped in there now then we want to just make sure that this raw edge of fabric here now is neatened off a little bit so what I'm going to do is just set my sewing machine to a wide zigzag I might not do this on every seam because this is otherwise I shall spend the whole demo neatening seams and what I'm going to do then 
is just quickly whiz along the raw edges just to neaten them up a little bit. Oops, there we go. Just run down that side. Now if you have any loose threads that are still hanging off, just go in there with a little pair of scissors. And there we go. And also this um, zigzagging, or you could overlock this if you've got an overlocker, um, is also going to secure the elastic again um, with some extra stitches, which is going to make the whole thing more robust. There we go. Right then. So that edge is all neatened off now. So I'm just going to give that a little press. Okay. Right, now pop that to one side. Putting it there as if I've got an assistant, aren't I? Who's going to press it for me? <laughs> oh, that's a laugh. Uh, just checking now to see whether I've put that. I probably put that up the wrong way. I think I might have done actually. <laughs> I think I put the other fabric the wrong way up. It doesn't matter. When I'm looking down at the bag, the sunflowers will be the right way up. There you are. All right, so I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side of the bag now. <clears throat> oh, hang on, we've still got on a zigzag, Stuart. Don't do that. Right, let's go back to 46 and try again. There we are. So quarter of an inch seam allowance throughout. You know, as soon as I saw this range of fabric, I thought, oh, shopping bags, market bags, produce bags, things like that, maybe a little wallet. Now all of those things are in Bags for Life, so if you want to make any or all of those things you can. And we had that lovely email earlier on from a viewer who had just made um, one of the trolley bags. There's a set of four, but I mean you can just make one or two of them if you want to. Just get rid of that little bit of zigzag there that I did in error. There we go. Happy accidents. No, that really was just an error. <laughs> okay, right, so I'm just going to press that back. Okay, so that's the front and the back of my bag done. So that's an easy job. Right, next up, I need to make the handles. So I've got some strips of fabric here. And what I've done is I've cut them all out of the same fabric because I just think that's gorgeous. I've interfaced two of them and left two of them uninterfaced. If you're going to do this with two different fabrics, you want to just interface the outer fabric. And then I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew down both long edges and also across one of the short edges. Becky, do you think you could just set the iron up for me, please? So just sewing down the side and across the bottom and back the other side. <laughs> Do you know, and sunflowers are everywhere at the moment, aren't they? Have you noticed in the supermarkets and on flower stalls, there are supermarket, uh, there are sunflowers absolutely everywhere. Right then, so that's one handle made, and now I'm going to do the other one. So exactly the same process. Now let's try and read a little message while I'm here. Uh, Kath's got in touch to say. Oh, let me just move that over. There we go. Read it now. Uh, Stuart, I'm in the middle of making my second market day tote bag in readiness for all the goodies I will no doubt be buying at Festival of Quilts. What a good idea. Because, of course, this, um, this bag can be rolled up really small and popped into your pocket. So it's a really, really good bag to take with you when you're not sure how much you're going to be buying. I'm putting it nicely, aren't I? <laughs> I am going to be at Festival of Quilts. I'm going to be there every single day. Um, I have my own stand. And so you can come and say hi. And also I'll be doing a little bit of meet and greet on the Sewing Street, in the Sewing Street Lounge. Um, mostly because I'm hoping that they're going to have refreshments there. So fingers crossed, eh? 
Um, so I've done that. Uh, but on the Sunday of Festival of Quilts, um, I'm going to be here in the morning presenting because everyone's on holiday and John is doing his special talk. So um, I'm coming in, so I'm leaving, leaving my stand just for the Sunday morning, um, but my husband Charlie will be there manning the stand. So if you've always wanted to meet him rather than me, then um, Sunday's the day to come. <laughs> So I'm just going to push this through. Nice, easy job, this. <laughs> ah, Fiona's got in touch to say, morning, Slim Jim. So what's the secret to your weight loss? Um, and also, a local farmer is doing pick your own sunflowers. Ah, oh, Fiona, that's something you need to get a picture of. That must be an absolutely beautiful sight. A field of sunflowers. There's nothing like it, is there? Well, oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. You're getting a sense of the realness of me sewing in my studio now because it's just absolute carnage usually. Yeah, yeah. But I just keep going. Um, yeah, you know, a field of sunflowers or a field of lavender um, is pretty special, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Well, my secret to the weight loss, by the way, is that I always thought that the world would stop turning if I missed a meal. It was kind of the message we were all given, wasn't it, throughout our lives? Don't, you know, breakfast the most important meal of the day, don't skip breakfast, you know, or, you know, the heavens will cave in. And, um, and, and I suppose what I've started doing is just missing the odd meal because I'm not hungry and I don't need a big meal or just having something like a bowl of soup instead of a big cooked dinner. But I was always in that rut of, but it's dinner time. There should be roast potatoes and vegetables and gravy, which isn't good when it's a lasagna, is it? Let's be honest. But um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Now, another question. Oh, compliments. Oh. Let's have it then. Morning, Stuart. Love your Bags for Life book. The projects are clearly explained and beautifully photographed. No wonder it won an award. Oh, thank you, Kate. That's really kind. Um, I'm really lucky, actually. Um, I've worked on my last three books with the most amazing photographer. She's called Rachel Whiting. And um, she's done so many um, features and front covers for interiors, magazines and home magazines. You know, those ones that I, I always look through and think, oh, oh they've got a lovely life. Um, I've turned my handles through. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of top stitching down two sides. So when you do top stitching, you just wanna increase your stitch length a little bit. Just make the stitching look a little bit nicer. And then I'm sewing quite near to the edge. I'm on the edge. There we go. All right, that's one side done. I seem to be trailing thread today everywhere I go. All right, and then down the other side as well. Today, I'm just being told something very exciting. I don't know if you're aware, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you pay more attention than me. <laughs> but um, we've been having a little bit of a competition to find the 12th dog for our Dog of the Month competition. Well, today, about 10 o'clock, um, we're going to be announcing the winning dog. Now, you know, obviously winning an award for Bags for Life was very exciting, but I think that pales into insignificance when compared with having your dog immortalised on everyone's quilt. I think that is really cool, really cool. So that's going to be happening around about 10 o'clock, so stay tuned. All right, so I've done my top stitching down both ends. And um, I, I sewed through one end to make it easier to push through, but I'm actually just going to clip that closed end off because there's kind of bulk in there that I don't need or want inside my seam. 
Okay, right, so I've got my two handles. Oh, Lulu's got in touch to say, unfortunately, I won't be able to get to Festival of Quilts this year. Maybe next year. Hope everyone has a great time. Oh, Lulu, we'll miss you, but don't worry. We'll still be doing lovely shows on, on Sewing Street. And in fact, let me tell you something. This is quite exciting. Um, we have got... Hello. Um, we have got a wonderful friend of mine called Rose, Rose Parr, who is coming over from Canada for Festival of Quilts. She's an author and she is coming over and she's coming on to Sewing Street on the Wednesday before Festival of Quilts and to do, to do her book. And she's so much fun, really fun and exciting. She's awesome. I love her to bits. We'll have a really, really fun morning, I know with her. I mean, I'm collecting her from the airport the day before and we're going out for some dinner. I've just pinned the handle in place five inches in from either side. All right, with that handle pointing down. And then I'm just gonna do the same on the front of the bag as well. So same thing again. There we go. So just pin this in place five inches in from each side. Hope everyone's going to be making this bag this afternoon. Yeah? Awesome. Our producer Ben's got nothing else to do this afternoon. So he's going to be doing this. Great, I love it. Okay, so you want to just baste the handles in place. Okay. Always by machine. I don't hand sew unless I have to. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that's that side done. Handle number one, let's do handle number two. Oh, I tell you what, it's time for a new needle in this machine, don't you think? Yeah, I'm gonna change the needle in a minute. <clears throat> Live on air. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, there we go. Right, so that's done. Right, next up, I'm going to grab my iron and I need to turn a little hem. Yeah, I'm going to use the Aliso iron and turn a little hem down. Oops. Take the pin out. That would help, Stuart. <laughs> All right, so let's press a little hem. I'm just doing about, I don't know, maybe a generous quarter of an inch hem. Just like that. And then I'm going to turn a second hem. Now, of course, that is turning the handle down, but what it's doing is it's capturing the raw edges of the handle because this is an unlined bag. And we do need to capture those raw edges. So I'm just pressing that down. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the handles back up again so they're in the right position. And I'm just going to pop a pin in place. Just there and there. I don't want them to move while I'm sewing. And then what I'm going to do is top stitch right across to secure the top of the bag and also to hold the handles into the right position, which is that uppermost position. So here we go. Obviously it's quite a thick layer to get through. There we go, bang, bang, bang. Now you can add a second line of top stitching along the very top edge of that if you want to as well. Okay, so there we go. You can see now the bag handle. Isn't this starting to look like a lovely bag? Yeah, starting to look good. 
<laughs> right, let's just do the other side really quickly and then we can get this puppy put together. Actually, do you know what? I should really call it a kitten today, shouldn't I? Being National Cat Day. Oh, do you know what? Sewing's easy. Sewing shouldn't be hard anyway, I don't think, because I think life is challenging enough without making sewing difficult. Of course I want another picture of a cat. Need you ask? Ah, oh, morning all. Miles is my rescue cat who regularly helps me in my craft room. Moda and sunflower, what's not to love? Oh, Miles is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm a cat person. I'll admit it. I love dogs. I do love dogs, but at my heart, I'm a cat person. Oh, cats are lovely. Yeah. Let's just pin that in place. And let's do that size. Side, rather. There we go. Right, then let's sew this last side down and then we can put it together. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. So I love making projects that give sort of almost like an instant fix and, you know, instant gorgeousness. And um, I've said this many times before, a lot of that is picking the right fabric, picking fabric that really gives. You know what I mean? Because there's fabric and there's fabric. And of course you could make this in any fabric you like, but if you pick fabric that's got real impact, how can your finished bag not be anything other than gorgeous? Yeah? So we've got the front and the back of the bag made. I'm going to sew these together now. Now again, this is where, if you're making this at home, you're gonna sew the seam and then you're going to either overlock it or um, neaten the edge with um, a zigzag, something like that if you don't have an overlocker. You wanna make sure that you match up those side seams uh, well too. I'm slightly sort of winging a prayer today, but that's okay, you understand. This is sewing in the real world, isn't it? So I'm going back to, um, or I'm sticking with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm just going to reinforce at the start. Okay, and away we go. So yeah, I mean, some people construct and kind of with an overlocker, don't they? So you could just construct this bag and overlock the edges in one one step. That would be fab. Okay, when you get to the bottom edge, you're just going to pivot and sew across. So this bag doesn't have boxed corners. This is a, a flat bag, yeah? Um, you could box the corners if you want to, but I'm not quite sure necessarily how it would fold up then. But, uh, okay. And we'll just pivot for the last side. Now then, I'm going to need a hand sewing needle in a second. I think I see one that's already threaded up with some thread in it. How fortuitous is that? It's like it's meant to be. Let's just get that top edge together. Come on, baby, you can do it. All right, good. Okay, right, so that is done. I'm gonna turn the bag through. Yeah, it's a nice bag, isn't it? So there's our, there's our little shopping bag, almost finished, really gorgeous. There's just one more thing to do. Now we've got some toggles on the show. So let me just grab my needle and thread. Now it is red thread, but hey, forgive me. I can't, I can't be threading a needle live on air. Now you want to position the button directly above the elastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna really like ham fistedly sew this toggle on. So forgive me. <laughs> 
but you know there's some things I can do well live and then there are other things do you know I'm really really bad at hand sewing I'm going to put it out there no I am I always get the thread in a tangle I always seem to stab myself I'm forever pulling the thread out of the needle so there's no way that I've sewn this button on securely enough but it's enough to give you an idea see I just stabbed myself then did you see that did you see me flinch <laughs> okay right that's done let me just show you then kind of what happens so um so there's your shopping bag you can take this out shopping um and then <clears throat> let me just flick the page see if i can remember how to fold it together so all you've got to do really is leave the handles down kind of fold it into thirds and fold these right over there we go, like that, and then fold this up and roll it up like so, like that, and then you're just going to take the elastic all the way around, and then there's your snug little parcel that you can just pop into your pocket or your uh, glove box or something like that and or in your pocket and then when you're at festival of quilts and you see something gorgeous you could say do you know what I can carry that home I've got my bag <laughs> and then it's nice and easy and there's there's your finished bag all done what do you think Hey, we did all right. We got a bag made, <laughs> live on air. <coughs> we can't still have four minutes left. What am I going to do in that time? <laughs> yes, let's look at a picture of a cat. Hello, Sotay. Check this out. Relaxing as only a cat knows how. This is my cat, Sooty. So they just, they just know they're it, don't they? Beautiful. All right, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, Debbie Harris is going to be here. I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Hi, everyone. I'm Sally Ann Harrison, and I am a patchwork and quilting fanatic. Um, and I've been sewing all my life. I'm currently based um, here in Bristol, um, but I used to live in the USA and that's where I picked up the sewing bug big time. I suppose you could say that my sewing journey began when I was about eight or nine. I distinctly remember the first thing that I ever made um, and it was, I, I, I say I ever made on my own, obviously I did sewing at school, but I came home and I chopped up one of my mother's old uniforms and she used to work in a store. I cut up these little pieces of cotton and I made myself a bikini top and I can remember the absolute thrill of putting this little bikini top on and going out on my bicycle and riding up and down the road and that was the first thing that I ever made and I was totally, totally smitten. My claim to fame has to be um, demonstrating at the Houston International Quilt Show. Um, I am very heavily into wool applique and I developed a technique where you would use a perlay thread on the top of a sewing machine and they were interested in Houston I actually went along to demonstrate in open studios studios whilst the show was on it was really really magical to have so many people that were interested in what I could do with the sewing machine I am one of the longer running um, guests now on sewing street goodness knows how that happened but I still get an absolute buzz every time I come up and do a demo and I love receiving your messages and the feedback after the show, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm hoping to bring you lots of new techniques and different ideas, so do stick with me and follow my Sewing Street journey.
Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account, and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome back to Sewing Street. Or welcome to Sewing Street. If you had a little bit of a, a later start today, um, don't worry about getting dressed. Keep your PJs on. We don't mind.
It's lovely to have your company on what is, let's be honest, National Cat Day. We're asking for photos of your cats. Do keep them coming in. Helen in Hereford's got in touch. Good morning, Stuart crew. Mickey loves to help me so. Well, they do, don't they? They have quality control. Mickey looks like he's lived before, doesn't he? That, that fa he knows a lot. He what knows a lot. Wise, what a beautiful it? cat. Of course, he's got a real, real handsome face. Beautiful. Um, listen, at 10 o'clock, uh, Kate's going to be coming down to announce the winner of our competition to find our cover girl, oh boy, um, for the dog of the month, panel number 12. Wow. Yeah, we're going to immortalise someone's pet on a quilt. How cool is that? Really cool. Anyway, this hour, super exciting. I'm here with Debbie Harris. Hey! Hi! Hi! Hiya! You're Hello! Right. I'm good, thank How you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> you certainly are. It's been a <laughs> while. It. Loving the rainbow nails. Thank you. Absolutely gorgeous. Rocking Check it. those out. Rocking it. I love it. Um, and talking of loving it, I'm loving your country garden wall hanging, wow. which is hanging right behind me now. So in this hour, uh, we're going to be featuring Debbie's gorgeous country garden wall hanging, which features some beautiful star blocks, some windmill blocks with applique, and a gorgeous applique center, plus some lovely <coughs> kind of checkerboard patchwork around the outside. There's some free motion applique as well, which is really super and exciting. We're going to be learning a lot of techniques with you this morning, we Debbie. We are. Have we got long enough? I, we'll do I our best. So. I'll whiz through these and we'll hand straight <laughs> over. Um, now then, we've got three different bundles, three different kits to make Debbie's gorgeous wall hanging, depending on what you like. Now, let's start off with the one that's actually made behind me, <coughs> which is absolutely gorgeous, so pretty, and features blues and purples. Let me show you the fabrics. You've got this gorgeous ditzy little like 1950s floral which is really cute a uh, little bit of aqua and blue there going on that is so pretty love this little modern geometric kind of dashed print it's a great reminder that you can get a country look using quite modern fabrics and we've got this, I love this one with the tiles on. You've used that in the star centres, mm. haven't you? Love mm. it. Gorgeous pink there as well. And then we've got these really lovely lilacs. That one's gorgeous, isn't it? Really like that. So those are all of your floral fabrics. How much of each of those do we get? Okay. Are these... Hmm. Not sure if they're fat quarters. Let me open one up. I'll open mm -hmm. one up. It's a fat quarter. Yes, they're fat quarters. So you're getting two, four, six, eight fat quarters of your kind of feature fabrics. And then you're getting your coordinates and you're getting half a meter of each of these. And you've got a lovely soft pink, an ivory, and a, a light pearl gray. Beautiful. You also get, very importantly, your full instructions for making the country garden wall hanging and all for 48.99. That's great value, absolutely love it. Right, so that's the first option. Now, second option that we've got is the yellows, yeah, these yellows, absolutely lovely. Now, this is one of my favorite color combinations, actually. If I'm gonna use yellow, I want it with gray. Mm. I just love that combo. <clears throat> so it's actually the colours I used for my very first fabric range. So you've got that gorgeous, really deep honey yellow. You've got some Wiltshire shadow there. We've got a little bit of Allison glass in that gorgeous rusty gold there. A bit more Liberty. <clears throat> some lemon yellow. Nice little bit of Yoko Sato uh, taupe fabric there. That's pretty. A little gingham a little floral. It's a wonderful eclectic country mix, isn't it? So there are all your fat quarters and then you've got three <coughs> half meters. So you've got some gray, you've got some very soft lemon yellow 
and then you've got that warmer sunshiny yellow plus your full instructions from Debbie Harris so that's option number two that's the yellow version and then last of all we've got a version we've called pastels which is a lovely kind of well it's lovely actually because it's kind of golds and apricots and peaches and greens so it's got a lovely fresh look to it let me show you what you're getting here so you've got this really pretty um, strawberry uh, flower and strawberry motif on apricot you've got this lovely soft peachy toned orange uh, Kath says morning Debbie by the way oh morning Kath uh, you've got morning. that lovely tile print a little bit of gorgeous green floral there that's nice with the little bees on it um, oh I say you've got a little bit of tilde in there that's rather nice you've got some Wiltshire shadow as well from Liberty so those are your eight fat quarters and then you've got your three half meters and you've got like a sort of a light cappuccino you've got a lovely warm peach and then you've got uh, this sort of buff color absolutely lovely plus your instructions goes really nicely together now then fourth option is instructions on their own <clears throat> okay so if you'd like to get the instructions on their own to make Debbie Harris's country garden wall hanging details are on screen it's 9.99 and for that you get all of your instructions to how to sort your fabric how to make your star blocks how to do your applique and your free motion embroidery there's even a template for your free motion embroidery how to put the whole quilt together absolutely everything you need there to reproduce Debbie's quilt so if you've got maybe some scraps at home some fat quarters some half meters that you want to use for the wall hanging you can get the instructions <coughs> on their own 9.99 okay fab it's a couple of other bits and pieces that you might need to make the wall hanging <clears throat> h640 debbie mm. you like that for using for your your wadding yes i like the fusible h640 <coughs> yes i like it when it's fusible oh yes definitely love the h640 yeah. we'll love a fusible h640 if you've never used it um, for quilts before you've only used it for bags it's absolutely superb for wall hangings because in particular it is a poly um, batting and it has a little bit more I don't want to call it stiffness because it's not stiff but it's got structure mm. so where cotton battings are made to drape Mm. and hang over a bed really nicely yes. for a wall hanging actually what we want is it for, for it to kind of hold its shape mm. and not to ripple and buckle and so using a poly h640 is going to give you a much cleaner straighter flatter wall hanging mm. so it's a really smart move you've also got the adhesive dots on one side so that's going to be fused now debbie bit of advice mm -hmm. when you're using a single-sided fusible batting which side do you fuse to i fuse to the front the top of the quilt right because then that's got the most structure to it the top yeah because the back especially when it's a wall hanging the back's not going to be seen it's right. not like a quilt where it's you see that it, it might be interchangeable mm. so i would fuse to the <clears> top <throat> of the quilt would you yeah yeah i would yeah. i'd fuse it to the yeah. to the outer fabrics yeah. and then to keep your backing in place what do you do to keep that there bit of 505, bit of 505. Yeah. yeah perfect yeah. but what is lovely about and i totally agree with debbie because you've got that fusible it means that literally every millimeter of the front of your quilt which is the bit that's going to show is going to be fused to something so it's not going to move or shift while you're quilting so that's your h640 you get a meter for one uh, for 9.99 now then, I see some bonder web, Debbie. Mm, I love a bit of bonder web. Yeah. So yeah. is this what you use for your it is. applique? It is. Yeah. So you've got a little package here. It's 120 centimeters by 17 and a half centimeters for 2.99. Is that going to be enough for the whole project? Oh yes. Yeah, because there is quite a lot of applique, but there's not too much. No. It's just on four of the corner blocks <coughs> in the centre. 
Yeah. So it's so plenty there. Plenty, plenty there for yeah. two ninety nine. Really worth grabbing to have in your stash anyway, I think, uh, mm. fusible web, because it's super useful. Um, now, one more thing that I'll just quickly show you before I hand over to Debbie. Well, a couple of things. We've got the 60 mil rotary cutter from So Simple. I'm a recent convert to the 60 mil rotary cutter, Debbie. Really? I've not used it. Have you not? No. Oh, so things Good. like borders, bindings, well, anything really, because yeah, I always give the analogy, if you're riding a bicycle, the bigger the wheels, the, the kind of quicker you get yeah, there and the like easier it. it is. So if you've never used yeah. a 60 mil rotary yeah. cutter before, oh, super. Is it life changing? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Disappointed. I'm going to be honest, it didn't change my life, but I did go, whoo, that's it. Wow, that was quick. That mm. was, I'm through this in no time. And especially with something like your, um, Come on, guys. I can't help. I don't know what's the word. What you you know what say? I'm doing at no. home, don't you? I'm going through the slots. Oh, I'm going crazy through the grids. Slots. Your stripology. Yes. Stripology. stripology. Yes. So fast. So easy. Anyway, clue. I offer that up. Do you know what? I should quit before, while I'm ahead, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> Jump before I'm pushed. <laughs> Debbie. Stuart, hello. Hello. Seems ages since I've seen you. I know, it's been you. a little while. I've been off, but you know, it's lovely to be back. Mm. So, Debbie, where do we start? Well, we start with the star blocks. Great. And these aren't your regular star blocks, are they? No, they're a crisscross star block. You've so, got a finished star block there, so we can just have a quick look. I have got a finished one. Here's <clears> one I made earlier. Do you want that, me to pop that there? Yeah, yeah, there? yeah. I just think this is gorgeous yeah. and it's a bit different. So this is, yeah, I call this the crisscross star because the star points crisscross over. Yeah. See what I did I there? I really like that. Yeah. And it also means, although it's very neat and it's very accurate and there's lots of if you like that precision and you enjoy that sort of sewing where it's nice and pointy you get that but it's also a little bit more forgiving around these edges so it's really nice and yeah. there's no you know i like to be a bit random mm. i like to be a bit yeah 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 mix it up a bit so there's no um right or wrong of which way you layer those okay so it doesn't i like it if it's a bit one one's mixed so this one on the right is going underneath this one on the left. Me too. This one's the other way round. Yeah. Because it means that you've you need to be concentrating and thinking about it. Mm. It's considered, mm. but it's not critical. If so it's, this is a nice relaxer. Um, yeah. We like exactly. That. We like I like that. relaxed. I like random. I like it to just be a bit more. I want people to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Whilst also getting the. And position. you're using the yellow and grey version, the yellow I and grey kit. I am. Yes. <coughs> which looks really lovely. I made re up. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how these kits have come together. Mm. They look great, don't they? So this crisscross star, as you mentioned, Stuart, I picked, and when I put these bundles together, I picked one particular fabric that was more prominent if you mm. like that could be used as the center of that star block so it doesn't matter which fabrics you use because you're going to use all so in the star you get you use in the center one pick that as the feature one and then you're also using it in the star point mm -hmm. as well there's mm -hmm. eight different fabrics so you need to start by obviously the pattern explains in here all about what you have to cut and how many of each you have to cut etc etc so that's really clear and I've put photos as well of all the stages. Great. So I think it's nice if you start by sort of laying it out so you know what that block is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So it's made up of nine squares itself. Mm -hmm. So it's a nine patch quilt mm -hmm. and the crisscross stars have got nine blocks in them I as like well. I that, yeah. Nice bit of continuity. Nice bit of, uh, yes. So if you lay it out like this, then you can see how it's going to come together because mm -hmm. I always think it's strange isn't it with with quilts that you see them and they look like one thing mm. and then when you break them down mm. they're the components of lots of different other blocks yeah and I think a lot of us are used to making star blocks using flying geese or half square triangles for the star points but you're actually starting with a square so this is a bit different mm -hmm. Like it. So I've got my nine squares that will make up that crisscross block and then I've cut out here. These are a bit smaller, these squares. These are two and a half inch blocks. I love a two and a half inch block. Mm -hmm. And I've layered them so that they're alternating a little bit and how I want them 
that that's not going to be necessarily the order I sew them in, but I've right. mixed them up. So I've got the greys in with the yellows and the paler colours with the darks. And what I want to do is mix them up so that I've only, I'm using one of each for each of these four points mm -hmm. where I'm going to make the crisscross for the stars. So I might use that grey and this one, this lighter <coughs> one, that darker yellow with the paler one. So these two are going to make the crisscross yep. of my points for my star. So you can just start by doing a little bit of planning so that you don't get halfway through and think, oh, have mm. I used that fabric or <clears> have <throat> I used this one? Mm. Okay, so that's how I'm going to sew them together. Okay. And then it's literally at this point, set your machine to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start with this one at the top. Yeah. And then I'm going to, I'm not a big pinner, Stuart. Right. So because they're only two and a half inch blocks, I'm just going to place that smaller block right side down yeah. on top of the yellow. Now, if this was a pattern fabric, that would be right side facing. So gotcha. they're right sides together. Yeah. And then I'm going to sew and you could, if you prefer that precision and you want to be extra precise, I've done this so many times I could mm. do it. Mm -hmm. Well, say I could do it with my eyes closed. Let's have a look. Um, Please don't. <laughs> no, no, I won't. You're going to sew along this diagonal line. So, so you're actually, going to eyeball it. I'm going to eyeball it. But if I was doing it at home and it's your first time doing this kind of block, then I would draw with your friction pen a line along this diagonal. So although I've set my machine here to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, at this point, you're just sewing along a straight line rather than a quarter of an inch seam. So there we go. Now bear with me, Stuart, while I um, familiarise myself with this lovely yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it lovely? Oh, it's a gorgeous machine. Is that on the right setting for you? Do you want a centre centre needle uh, a position? A centre one would be better. Yeah, so if you just set it to zero two. Oh, on here? Think, yeah, so go down, that's it. Oh, okay, zero two. I think, oh, is that okay. centre needle? Yes. Or is it to the left? Yeah, uh, no, that's centre, isn't two. it? Yeah, perfect, right. That's so that's centre needle position. That's Stitch better. length of 2.5, okay? Perfect. Yeah, awesome. Perfect, thank Yeah, you. it's ever so easy to use. It's Brother nice FS250. So I'm going to set every seam. Yeah. And then I'm going to Do you want me to set and press? Oh, you love doing a bit of press. I'd love doing a bit of work you? for you, because I'm just thinking you can you sew. Go. I know you've got a few things to sew. You are good. I like to be useful if I can. Can you hurry up, please? Oh, you want it back? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm only joking. Wow. Um, and then I'm going to place this one. See what I mean about it doesn't matter which diagonal, which way right. I'm going. So I'm going to place this square now in this bottom right hand corner and I'm going to sew in that direction, that okay. diagonal. So that's kind of chopping through what you've already sewn. Yes, it gotcha. is. Gotcha. It look oh no, it hasn't. I'm going to say it looks like that needle's come and threaded. But it hasn't. So yes, it crisscrosses yep. over the um, the previous one that I've just sewn. So cut your seam allowance. Again, I'm eyeballing this. Yeah, yeah. My no glamorous worries. assistant is going to Yeah, you're not press. kidding. They don't get more glamorous than me, let me they tell don't. you. They don't. I've never had such a glamorous assistant. Yeah. There we, we go. We look good together, don't we? We really do. <laughs> Make an handsome couple. We do. So, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was a chat-up line or... don't think it was, I do was my it? best. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, you've been out of action for a while, haven't you, Stuart? <laughs> I mean, I've, in the fact that you've not been very well, I oh, mean... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you understand. Yeah. Rather than just been living in a cell on my own. <laughs> Oh, Charlie and I oh, still have date nights. You. We went actually, we had a gorgeous night away I feel um, in, uh, in uh, n the north of North Yorkshire. Oh, where did you go? Oh, we went to a place called the Carpenter's Arms, which is this gorgeous kind of gastro pub. And they have these beautiful um, rooms. Oh, as well, no. that are kind of separate from the pub itself. Oh, so, okay. oh, it was just beautiful, and the nice. weather was so lovely as well. Oh. I'll put a couple of pictures actually on my social media because yeah, we had such nice. a lovely time. Lovely. The sun was shining on us. You can't beat you can't beat being in Yorkshire. Can oh, it's it? romantic. It was lovely. Was it romantic? It was. It was. Which oh. isn't bad after nineteen years, is that's, it? That's good going it's after nineteen good. weeks, isn't yeah. it? Really? <laughs> 
So a little bit of press in there, and that's your second star point. So, so this that comes together go, nice and quick, it does doesn't come it? Together it's going nice to give that a quick. bit of a. Yeah. There we go. I love something that is whether it's a quilt or a wall hanging, whatever it is, mm. that looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. Yeah. And that comes together quickly. Because I get a little bit bored, Stuart, when I'm doing do block after block after, yeah. You get a little bit more. Oh, well, I do. So no, I like I totally it to be you. quite quick, quick make. Well, and also as well, it's good <clears throat> to make something that's kind of a little bit exciting along the way isn't it yes. and I like it when every block even though it's the same block but every block looks a little bit different yeah, and of course when you're placing fabrics differently you do end up with different looking blocks exactly mm. everyone is different and that's why I like it to be a bit yeah. random a bit mixed up um, so that it's nice and yeah I think I would for I don't make quilts where every block is the same block no. and the same fabric no no. Um, I, I think they look beautiful in their simplicity, mm. but I just, I, I would just find that a little bit of a slog. Yeah, me too. I'm waiting for you, but I can Second get started. Second one. Third one. Third one. This really is coming together quick. It is. So. Remember, if you want to get the version that Debbie's working on, that's the yellow and grey, which is gorgeous. The grello, as I like to grello, call it. Grello, I like that. The grello. Yeah, um, I love yellow and grey. Yeah, it's go. really looking Thank good, you. isn't it? And presumably as well, Debbie, if I wanted to, I could you just use, say, four fabrics yep. or two or three fabrics, yeah. something like that. I could mix and match. Yeah, absolutely. You wouldn't need all of the eight points to be different. No. Um, like you say, you'd probably need four, wouldn't you, to make it... You'd need four fabrics yeah, so yeah. that it's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you could use two, couldn't you? You could use two, as long as each of the points were different, it yeah. would be fine. Yeah, but you've got um, plenty of fabric. But eight in this bundle is is fabulous. Great. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And I love the fact that you've used a yellow for the background mm. because it's always very tempting and it's my comfort zone too, to always go to white or mm. ecru or tan or something Thank like you. that. I wanted to be, I, I had the, I was, I was saying to you earlier, I was quite pleased with it that I got to choose the colours this oh, time, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. lovely. So you put all of these so together, that's gorgeous. So I put them gorgeous. together, which was a real privilege, and I really enjoyed that. And when, um, you know, I thought, I, I thought about it being a yellow colourway, if you're going to go yellow, let's go yellow and have it nice and bright. Oh yeah. And I have to say, you know, we all have our favourite colours, don't we? And we mm. our go-to colours. Mm. Yellow isn't really my go-to no, colour. I don't use a lot of yellow. No, no it's funny. Um, but I've, so I've really enjoyed it actually. It's been yeah. really nice. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking that star block, um, the points, and I'm just sewing a, a plain square to each side of it you know yeah. i've got my rose here i'm just going on you know going ahead yeah, yeah no that's cool but uh, yeah i think and because of the gray then it tones the yellow down doesn't it just mm -hmm. enough so it's well, it nice adds a lovely modern touch the gray and the yellow together yeah, it does so, they yeah. do go beautifully together. Now, don't forget, if you want to get instructions on their own, you can get the instructions on their own. If you want to use your own fabric selection, we've got three lovely kits, but if you want to use your own fabric selection, you can. The pattern is $9.99. Uh, delve into your stash, use up your scraps. You're getting all <coughs> your instructions to make Debbie Harris's country garden wall hanging, including pinwheel blocks and the crisscross star blocks. You've also got that lovely machine applique. Um, very beginner friendly, but it's also, I like the fact that it's kind of taking things a little bit further because you're combining applique with piecing. Yeah. You're doing a star block that's a little bit different using a method that you might not have used before. Really like that. Um, and full instructions. That's the thing. It's a, there's a lot of variety in it. Like, again, I just wanted it to be nice and yeah. varied. Lots of different skills, but simple and very doable. Yeah. So I'm fold pressing. I've got lots of loose ends here. Let me just snip them off. Um, lots of threads. They get in the way, Stuart. Don't they really they? do. They don't really they? do. Don't they? And then they end up wrapping around. You got to trim as you go. Trim as you go, absolutely. So when I'm f uh, pressing these blocks, I'm pressing the bot the top row of the bottom one 
away from the center block um, and then the middle row I'm pressing towards so that when I sew those rows together they will be able to nest nice and neatly so you're avoiding any bulk in those blocks when you put them together. Now you do get a huge amount of fabric in each bundle, it's amazing. Let me just show you again what you're getting. So in the first bundle, which is the one that the quilt's made of that's hanging right behind me, for £48.99 you get all these gorgeous fat quarters, you get eight different fat quarters. And you're also getting three half meters of the solids that go with. So you're going to use this for <coughs> your pinwheels and also for the background of your star blocks. And you've got all your fabric there for your appliques, your stars and also the border. And also, did you see, I don't know if you did, but on the wall hanging it has lovely tab tops for you to put a rod or a pole through, a curtain pole looks nice through it. Um, and you get enough fabric to do that as well and your binding. We get the binding as well, don't we, Debbie? Yes. Amazing yeah, value. It's all there. Amazing value. Now, I didn't mention earlier on when I was going through the pattern, but as well as all the instructions, of course, you are getting uh, full-size templates for all of your appliques. Um, none of them need reversing, do they? Don't no. Reverse no, because it's a symmetrical design, mm -hmm. so it's fine. And then you're also getting all of the lines as well that you're going to quilt. Now, Debbie, I know we could draw those on mm -hmm. and free motion quilt them exactly on the lines, mm -hmm. but what would you say to uh, makers out there? If you, if you can, I would trace them off, yeah. how, whatever your preferred method is, with a friction pen and draw the lines onto the quilt and yep. then use that as your <coughs> line to yep. free motion on. And slavishly follow that line or just oh, use it as a no. guide? Oh no, 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 I like a bit of sketchy free motion. Right. So I would go up and down that free motion line yep. three or maybe four times. Okay. Yeah, and not on the line. Right, so it's so just a guide. It's just a guide. Nice oh, and absolutely, relaxed. yeah, not to be followed religiously or to no. the letter. But also as well, if free motion quilting isn't your thing, you could always hand sew those, couldn't yeah. you? Hand embroider them. Yeah. And I'm thinking this wall hanging would look lovely with some embellishments too, maybe some buttons or beads, little you, Yes, charms. it would. You could also, I'm just chopping that seam allowance off, you could also just use a straight stitch. Yeah. Although they're quite curved, the lines, yeah. you could just use a straight stitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so that's come together quite quickly. It really has. And then I'm brilliant those. iron, isn't it? You oh, know, you don't great. have to put it back up on its side. It just has its little legs. It's I know. Really nice. I've not used this one before, and it's fab. Yeah, they are really good, and they also—it's the evenness of the heat. You get such a fantastic press. Just pop it back down for it's you. It's automatic, you see. I know to put it is. It on its, on its We're end, enslaved. We're great. enslaved. Okay, so oh, that's gone a bit skew with that one, Stuart. Oh, so. oh, I don't know what I've done there. <laughs> Let's bring this one in. This is a bit neater. So that's your finished star block. Okay, so that's it. It comes together quite quick with all those eight points. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, when it comes to quilting, I wouldn't quilt the, until you're doing the whole piece when all the nine blocks are together. Okay. Um, but then I would go around the edge or you could do wavy lines. Mm -hmm. Again, there's no right or wrong with quilting. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely not. That looks okay. gorgeous. Thank you. So that's the crisscross star. That's the crisscross star. So block one, check. Block yeah. two. Yeah, are we all good? There's more. Oh, of course, loving it. So now we're going to make the pinwheel. I call this a pinwheel block. What did you call windmill? Windmill. Pinwheel, windmill. windmill. Yep. I'll tell you what, Debbie, I can never make, as long as I've been quilting, I can't make a pinwheel without getting one of the half square triangles round the wrong way mm. and having to turn it at least four times if not more yes. until I finally get it in the right yeah, position. Yeah there is a little bit of positioning <laughs> isn't there but it's all good fun. Yeah. So that's what we're going to make so to do this there's lots of different ways you can make this block. This is the way I like to do it. Uh -huh. So I've cut two blocks exactly the same size uh, and again the measurements are in the pattern and then I'm going to place those obviously these are plain fabrics 
but they all right sides together if they were patterned fabric. Yes. And then I'm going to do a quarter. You want quarter of an inch? Quarter of an inch. So that's oh. stitch 46. Oh, you're good. You know that you, know you do. Oh, though, it's don't such you? an easy machine to Look use, at that. though. Quarter it's, of an inch. And the thing is, if you ever forget, you don't have to remember these oh, I like things. That. There's a brilliant stitch chart actually as part of the machine, like a little flip chart on the side of the machine. It's absolute super simplicity. It's really um, nice. The other thing, Debbie, it comes with such an amazing foot package. You've got loads of extra dressmaking feet, things like a bias binding attaching oh. foot and a pin tuck foot. You get a gathering foot. Uh, you get a blind hemmer foot. Absolutely amazing. Look at all this stuff. It's just brill and 250 stitches. You wow. get three alphabets. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but the I whole do. machine is £399. It's amazing. God, that is good value. Yeah, really I, amazing. Especially with the alphabet as well. Yeah. Three alphabets. <coughs> you do. You get like a solid capitals. You get cursive. And you also get like an outline. Very nice. Um, capitals. Yeah, really, really cool. And an extension table. Get the lot. It's nice. It's a nice so, machine to use. Debbie, you've sewn all the way around the outside so if you're making a cushion cover. Yes. Um, with no zip, no turning out. No. So you might think, oh, How are you gonna what do that? we do now? Mm. So now we are going to. I love a bit of intrigue with, with sewing. I'm intrigued. <laughs> so we're now going to cut diagonally both ways across this block. Yep. So when I say diagonally, I'm going, I mean, your seam allowances should all match anyway, but I'm going now on this diagonal not mm -hmm. the square of the fabric they should line up anyway but with the sewing line that you've oh, just I done got you. yeah and then i'm going to go across that way now let's see if i can get this i don't think i've got the room Stuart, to rotate so i I'm think going it's to... locked to be honest with oh, you oh well you did that on purpose but i've got it in the next hour i'll show you how to use it in it's the next lovely, hour it's a lovely size this one yeah and a lovely color I oh think. it's let's my be favorite and then I'm going to do exactly the same and cut the other way in the diagonal. And then, this is where the magic, you know, like you said, I like a bit of magic with it. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> the magic of patchwork. The, ma the magic, you know, we're never satisfied with it just being, you know, straightforward. We like a bit of magic. We do. So we I've do. set the seam. I'm uh, pressing towards the darker side, which yep. in this case is the grey. And then when you press them out, you get a square or a Brilliant. half square triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so press them all. As soon as you touch the machine, it knows that you've picked yeah. it up, so it puts the Ex legs away. Oh, I see what you mean. So yeah. So you just touch it, and wait it, a sec, and then it just drops the. Yeah. It's so nice. Mm. Imagine ironing you know, shirts and you know clothes with that. How well, easy that, that would be. Well, the thing that I just pop it flat again, Debbie. Debbie, come oh, on. Oh, sorry, come I'm on, used to come on. a normal iron. Enjoy those Look at legs. That. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy the technology, <laughs> Debbie. Um, How clever that is. Sorry, I'm getting a bit carried away with it now. I use it a lot for freshening up and taking the wrinkles out of clothes yeah. or the curtains or blinds, but vertical steam. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rather than ironing it, you just use the steam. It's superb. It's so nice. And we use it a lot here when we've hung quilts to get rid of any wrinkles, oh, things I like keep that. It up. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Um, I like mega anything. You like what? Mega sorry? steam. It's got mega steam. Mega setting. steam. It's and I just said I love mega anything. Do you? It's yeah. mega. Is that a word of yours? Mega? Although I drew the line the other day, I went shopping and I went into the Haribo shop, not for me, just to get something for Charlie. And he loves the fried eggs. Oh yeah, yeah. And I happened to spot a bag of just fried Hang eggs on. that you could buy, but it was three kilograms. Three, three kilograms kilos it was like a bin bag for mega bag a yeah mega bag. and i was like no i'm not encouraging that so i've I, I had a little bit of a moment twisting it like you said yeah yeah, yeah. because if you get them the wrong way around that's cause, right cause you can do all sorts can't you so you can make lots of patterns but you want the pinwheel so at this point it is important because we're going to applique it onto this center piece once that's all put together yeah i would suggest cutting off those little dog ears yeah because you really want to reduce as much bulk in that center as you can because then when you're free motion quilting later yeah reduce the bulk it will reduce the bulk perfect yes 
So there's my pinwheel. Double check that it's all in the right place. I was going to say. And then we're going to line up those diagonals as well as this vertical and horizontal mm -hmm. line. And so again, quarter So we don't have to trim in. those squares down to a particular size. No. They come out the right size. Well, we're going to trim them, all of the blocks, ah. to nine inches or is gotcha. it nine and a half, I think. Nine or nine and a half. Can't remember without double checking. I'm going to look. Have a look, Stuart. I'm I've sure got your I've, excellent pattern in I'm front of me. I put, I put it all in the pattern. And you try to remember all these measurements, but I have a lot to remember, Stuart. I know you do. Oh, I do. Is it nine inches? I'm still looking. Still looking. I'm still reading. <laughs> it's, a it's a big pattern. Cut each block to measure nine inches square. Oh, there you go, you see, I did remember. I did remember. Nine inches square. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's lots of pressing. You know, yeah. it's. I know it. It might look like I'm pressed. So that's what I'm doing: cutting, sewing, yeah. pressing. Yeah, that's it's why. so essential, isn't it? Oh yeah, because I, I like the. For all, I'm very much. Oh, let's keep it random. Let's have it nice. I do like it to be neat and I agree with you. I agree with you. It's, if you're going to do something, do it right. If you're doing it, Stuart, and. Although, as I also say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. But you can't, you know, sometimes, you know, maybe like it doesn't look as, and I find this with my quilts all the time, I think, oh, I need to get that quilted. Do you know what I mean? And mm. the quilting really, really does kind of bring everything oh, together. Oh, doesn't it? It yeah. really, really does. That's why I could never leave a quilt top unfinished I couldn't because it doesn't look how it's supposed to no. look until it's quilted no. you know no I'm lucky I've got a long arm you know but well yeah yeah you know but I, I like do to have to do finish it. them yeah. I don't have I'm one of those sewers I don't have lots of unfinished projects not mm. because I'm super good I just don't like having them unfinished no. I can't start the next one till I've done one agreed that's just how it is. And there's your pinwheel block. Fabulous. Da -da. <clears throat> so make sure, as I say, that you've cut those dog ears because you've got quite a lot of bulk there. <coughs> not sure how to reduce that any more, really, without s spoiling the integrity of the block. Well, the only thing that you could do is with those two centre seams is press all your seams open or yes. you can snip in and fan the, the very centre yeah. of the... It might be worth doing that. I'll show you. The thing is, though, I've sewn it. Quite a little sharp that pair of scissors. Now. I use my little applique ones. Will they yeah, do for you? Cool. Um, well, mm, possibly. I use them so, for everything. Do you? Mm. Yeah. So we haven't got any threads uh, in the centre. So you could just press that, that open. That would be better. But if that was going to cause like a sort of like show through, then what you can do is you can just snip either side and then just press the mm. centre open oh, I see. and then you can press this to, to the, the dark side. side. Oh, I see. Very so let good. me just press that and then I'll show you. So this was my plan all along really, just to get yeah, Stuart doing it. Yeah, I know. You with your untidy threads, I need to... I know, the, the thing is, I'm used to a thread cutter, you see. Mine's got a thread cutter, now, that's my excuse. Don't talk about your husband like that, Debbie. <laughs> I'm not married to do it. Oh, okay. Sorry, I just had to get that in. <laughs> Your slave. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk yeah, about your slave. Yeah, he's staff. <laughs> he's on the payroll. He's not on, actually on the payroll. Don't get me started. No, you don't get, but he's he just, doesn't get paid. Let me cut these because they're annoying. But can I just show you, look. Go on then. So oh, now, look at that. Look, you've got that little square, like a little four patch in the centre. Oh, that's amazing. And if you just feel how much flatter that is oh, now. Oh, that's a lot better. Like it? Yeah. Good. Love it. Next there time I write go. a pattern, yep. I'll give you a call. 10%, that's all I ask. Well... That was for free, wasn't it, this time? But well, that, that, technically no. no. I'm <laughs> going to be charging. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the bill's in the post. That's definitely a nice way of doing that. Thank you, Stuart. Because you do need as much reduction in that bulk mm. as possible because every pinwheel block that you're making for this wall hanging has the appliqued flower <coughs> in the centre yeah. and then all the embellishment around the edge. So that needs to be as flat as possible. Beautiful. So thank you for that. Now then, you're going to show us a little bit of appliqued quilting. Appliqued, appliqued, a little bit of quilting. Now, would you like me to change, should we just swap the sides and I'll change it over to a free motion foot for you? Yeah, that would be Is great. Is now the time? Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, now awesome. Now is the time. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm sure there I don't is. I even have to ask. So I'm just going to grab the little screwdriver and I'll pop that back on. Isn't it always nice when all the tools are in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Perfect. So your darning foot, what you want to do <clears throat> is just, you actually have to take the shank off the sewing the machine shank, yes. yeah I or can the, never remember the foot the, i call that i call that obviously that's the foot and i call this the ankle the ankle yeah yeah, yeah. but that's the technical term is shank wow i don't know i might have just made that up it so just good. slide it on and finger tighten it and then just with your screwdriver you just want just a little you don't want to like over tighten that no but so anyway, that's done now. Perfect. Now the only other little trick I'm going to show you is you don't really want your top thread up here. You want it through that hoop, don't you? Mm. So what I do is needle down, needle up, okay? And then use your bobbin thread and hold it in both hands and sweep it underneath. Oh. And now you've got both threads through the hoop. That was slick. Isn't that cool? Really cool. So that's that done, yeah, and then fab. I'm just going to drop Stuart. the feed dogs. So they are round the back. There we go. Feed Perfect. dogs are dropped. We'll put it on a centre needle position. You're good to Fantastic. go. Fantastic. Thank you very much. If only you were there just all the time. To I'm going back to my Winnebago <laughs> now, to be honest. <laughs> are you? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm going to refer back to the pattern. Because in the pattern, I what you get obviously this, the pattern for the applique. That in your pattern is attached to, as part of the booklet, but I have photocopied it so that because I don't like using the originals, so I've photocopied that pattern piece. You'll see here at the bottom it tells you how many pieces of each of the applique flower design you need mm -hmm. so how many you need for the center block oh cool because the center one is obviously full and it's got all of that design on and the number that you require for the corner oh, blocks. oh that's really useful so the corner blocks all you're doing is that center part really mm -hmm. just the flower and these three twirly bits mm -hmm. okay so that tells you how many to cut out of each you can see i've ticked them as I've cut them out ready when I did the sample. But Debbie, I always go off piste. I'm thinking, would I have enough fabric? Could I add extra appliques in those corners yeah, if I wanted? Absolutely, yes. Especially with, because I've written the pattern actually for eight fat eighths. Uh -huh. So the fact that you're getting eight fat, fat quarters. quarters gives you loads. Awesome. You've got loads of fabric left, which is brilliant. So I'm going to, well, how much time have we got? I'll just show you this center part. And then if we get more time, if we get enough time, I can About show you minutes. the rest. Yeah. So <coughs> I'm, because this is a symmetrical pattern, so it's exactly the same both sides, except the direction of the twirls, but that's fine. I'm just going to trace onto the paper side of the bonder web. Yeah. Because that's my preferred side. Yeah, me And too. that's all you need to do on this one. You don't need to photocopy it in reverse or anything else. So you draw around that flower in the center and then I'm going to also draw around the center of the flower because that's a separate piece of fabric. And I'm going to at this stage just cut them out very, very roughly. Oh, that oh. bonder web's separated, look. What it is, this is a piece of bonder web. It's on a roll. Yeah. And I think because I'm near the center of the roll, mm -hmm. it's sort of separated the yeah, top and bottom. Yeah, it does over time as well. Oh uh, yeah, I've had it a while. So that can go out of the way for now. And then just pick your fabrics. So again, it's entirely up to you which fabrics you use. So I try to use obviously coordinating ones where there's a contrast yes. between your dark and your light. Yes. So I'm going to use these two for this purpose. Lovely. So I'm going to use the yellow as the outer, so as the the flower itself, mm -hmm. and I'm going to press that bonder web paper side towards you, and that bonder web is underneath with the bobbly bits with the glue onto the wrong side of the fabric, and press that into place. <clears throat> so that's on the wrong side, and then I don't the know. I don't know how much of a horticulturalist you are, Debbie. But are there are there grey flowers? 
don't think there are, are there? I don't know. I mean, in, instinctively, I'm thinking no. But then I think, well, everything else has been bred, developed, you know, kind of sure, found. I know you can get like lots of silvery leaves. There's plants. lots of silvery, yes, but not necessarily. It's not dark grey, is there? No. Mm, like silvery and lilac-y. Yes, mm. the more lavender. You know, that's almost. They they are very close, aren't they? Greys yeah. and purples. If I got married again and I wanted to be like bridezilla, I'd insist on grey flowers. It's like it's all I want for the wedding. I just want everything to be grey. Debbie Debbie's pattern has grey flowers, and that's what I want <laughs> in my bouquet. Oh gosh, you know when we got married, I was just like, oh look, let's just do it. I'm just you know, I'm so grateful I'm to it. have found somebody who wants to marry me. <laughs> you snap just, them up quickly. You know, well no, actually we've been together about eight years before we got married but I was just like yes yes at last yes I will somebody accepts um, me yeah oh lovely and um oh do you know it was the best it was the best didn't get my grey flowers but that's okay no I mean I would say next time but you don't you really don't want a next time do you? no no don't do it although we keep on talking about like having a you know like a blessing oh that'd be nice which would be yeah, nice I think that's nice but we had our 10-year <coughs> anniversary last year, you know, 10-year wedding. So I suppose that would have been the time. Yeah, maybe wait yeah. till 20 now. Yeah, so yeah. So I'm peeling the back off. Sorry, I just shuddered then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. If you're still there. Um, I've peeled the back off that bondle web and then I'm just going to place it there mm -hmm. and then press again. <coughs> oh, lots of pressing, which is why a nice hot iron mm. at hand is perfect. So that's just secured that in place. Yeah. And then I'm just using the pin just to scratch off that back in. Oh, and also, Debbie, I'm just thinking mm. if, Debbie's was perfect, of course, but if your piecing was slightly less than, you know, and the centre wasn't quite, we've all done it, we've all been there, mm. but you're covering it with the flower. Good yes. old applique, eh? Yes, it covers any any uh, indiscretions doesn't it yeah i once had to applique a butterfly onto a quilt because i tore about a three inch gash through <gasps> the whole quilt oh yes i and know then you just applique my all tummy over just it. went whoop and uh, i thought what can i do could I, butterfly. could I please borrow the friction pen would that be okay yes you may i don't have there you are i don't have mine to hand so with the pattern, so you've got this is a, as if this was a corner block the way I've done the pattern, because I want I didn't want the corner blocks to take away from that centre feature block. Fair enough. And then you can, if you do this before you put the backing on, you can actually see through. Oh, okay. The uh, fabric <coughs> to draw that design on if you wanted to. I'm going to do it freehand. Do you know what, Debbie? I've got a light mine. box in the next hour. Oh, that would that be would perfect. be useful. Mm. Yeah, that's what you need really, mm. a light box. So you just, I've drawn these so many times, I can obviously just do it. Sure. Freehand, or maybe you can, that's fine. And as you said, Stuart, it's not got to be exact and precise. For this sure. It's just a guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do your own thing. Then, I was going to use a little bit of... Yeah. Because obviously so, you so will have So you would have quilt this. the whole quilt. <clears throat> you wouldn't would do have, this until the whole thing was layered. Yeah, I would have done... What I would have done here, if when I was making this at home, you put all your nine blocks of your whole wall hanging together. Mm -hmm. Sew them all together. Then I would do the quilt sandwich. Mm -hmm. So back it with your what preferred fabric. Mm. And then you've either got your H640, or this is a cotton wadding yep. um, in between. And that's how it would be. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to pretend I've done that part at this okay. point, even That's though I obviously enough. haven't. And then I don't have any H640, um, any 505 spray. So I'm just going to pin Wing it. that block. Oh yeah, we're pinned, we're pinned. To um, we're the pinned, wadding, so it's in place, which is absolutely perfect and yeah. fine. And then we're going to free motion. Lovely. So to secure this um, fabric uh, flower first, I'm going to start there with my free motion. Okay, so the foot's down. Stuart set it all up for me. And then I am literally... <laughs> I like how you say that. As if, if this goes wrong, if it goes wrong, I'm going to blame Stuart. It's obviously Stuart's fault. <laughs> but he's done it beautifully. 
And as we said earlier, you don't have to be absolutely perfect going around these petals or doing the design. Right. The more, oh, hang on, my little centers come up. Oh. Off. Sometimes that applique, I'm just gonna pop that there. Mm. It didn't quite fuse. So then I'm going to go round again. And I would go round this flower three times. And how close to the edge are you? I Again, I will interchange that. So one way round, I will go onto the fabric. Yeah. Because you've got to remember that you are, the purpose of appliqueing is to secure that fabric to the backing fabric. Yeah, yeah. So you want to be on the flower or on the design so it's secure. And then the other two, I'm just doing within a couple of millimetres of it. Okay. It doesn't matter if I go outside of that design because I think all that does is just makes it look quite... <coughs> it, it makes it, it really enhances cool. It. Yeah, I'm it just does. going to place... Now, this is where that centre block, mm -hmm. if you can reduce the bulk like yeah, you yeah, did, yeah. really, really helps mm -hmm. because I'm just going to skip over here to that centre block. Yeah. Mind your fingers. Is that going to go under? I'll tell you what, yeah. let me use my... It's going to go under, but it's just fighting me a little. Just lift the presser foot. Can I? Yeah. Lift it up again. Push it higher. There you go. Oh, you are good. We've so always got I've that got extra you. lift with your brother. Yes. So if you were doing something, put your presser foot down as well. Oh, that's what it is. That's it, yeah. It's really Perfect. easy to, to forget, isn't it, to put your presser foot down. Yes. There so this go. is where reducing the bulk Mm -hmm. in that centre really, really helps. Because you can see how even now, I'm just having to push it ever so slightly. Yeah, But it's Encourage. not a prop. Encourage it. That's a, good, that's a good word. I'm just encouraging it. Mm -hmm. But if that wasn't reduced... Oh, yeah, it looks good. It would be quite tricky yeah, to yeah. push it. You'd have to more than encourage it. It would be a shove. Love it. Okay, mm. so that's my free motion quilting on the You're flower. You do the little swirls. And then I'm going to do oh, the good front goody. swirls. I want to see this. Love <laughs> it. Is this the first time you've ever seen free motion, Stuart? It is, isn't it? He's so excited. Yes, it is. No, but but this technique of doing this like free motion. Oh gosh, I've gone sort a bit of like there. applique quilt. Um, is something I haven't really done myself. And I know Janet Clare, who does it a lot on her quilts. What's going on here? That's you where you go back off. and forth, though, you isn't it? Off. You soften all those edges. Yeah, I love doing this. It's so um, just freestyle. It's very forgiving, uh huh. What, yeah, you see, look, I, I soften that right out. What I do like to do when I'm at home, yeah. and my mum thinks, when my mum sees a picture of this, she thinks they're not my hands. I use quilting gloves. Oh, yeah. Oh, can you see how I'm gripping onto this? Yeah, yeah. That's just because my hands are a little bit smooth. Understood, yeah. So at home, I, don't, I just didn't bring them with me. I see, my use... hands are rough like sandpaper, so I don't have to wear gloves. Well, that's <laughs> perfect. Proper, proper masculine hands, is that oh, what it I... is? No, it's not true. I'm always moisturising. That's what it is. I did a little in-hotel hand spa treatment last night Did you? i got these special gloves that were impregnated with super duper moisturizer oh just sat there in my hotel room with my hands in big plastic gloves then have you done the one for you <laughs> i did one of those for my feet the feet. other week oh yeah, yeah, yeah. they're fab mm. so nice oh yeah yeah, we know oh, I know to, live, to treat don't myself we? in a hotel room Ooh, a little hotel room picnic and a hand mask <laughs> you know how to live don't you Stuart? I really do life in the fast lane <clears throat> so i'm just going backwards and forwards and this one this twirly bit because i want it to really <coughs> stand out yep you can see how i've already got that darker color thread yes in there and um i'm going over this line these lines four times yeah to really make them stand out as an outline so just go backwards and forwards really nice and there we go Gorge. and then you're all finished so take that away snip off your threads because i've already been told off about my threads <laughs> let's snip them off because they do get in the way don't they take the pins out they hold those blocks really nicely with that wadding mm. and then press with my super duper iron yeah that removes all the friction pen 
yep. markings and just flattens it out and there's your finished design it's fab all done so you've got your nice center flower your twirly bits and then when you do that center block you obviously just follow this pattern as to where to place all the little pieces all the different colors of your fabrics and that's how you would lay them out and your four corner blocks are laid out like that <coughs> fabulous and love it they go together love it. they alternate together in that way yeah really cool and of course i guess if you wanted to do this quilt as you go you can have sashing separating out each of the That'd blocks be nice. you have to make a little adjustment in the border but you could do that too yeah that would be really nice yeah, actually yeah, yeah. because it would be nice to sort of complete each block as a separate one then you could just hand sew them together mm. or just do a zigzag couldn't you to piece yeah, them together yeah. would be nice love it really so fun project um Gorgeous. I love it. Lo I always love a project that's got lots of different techniques. So this one's got making your half square triangles, different way for me, uh, making your crisscross stars, doing your free motion applique wreath as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Great. Now, Debbie, thanks for that. Thank We're you. We're seeing you in an hour's time, aren't we? Yes. So enjoy your break Thank and you. we'll see you back with the brand new promenade collection from Moda. Yes. After the break, we're going to have Kate on just for a few minutes. We're going to be announcing the winner of our dog of the month, dog of the year. We're going to commemorate that dog in a quilt. It's going to be groovy. Make sure, make sure you stay with us. I'll see you in just a few minutes. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting and of course applique which is my favourite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family run customer service team are on call 24 seven. Full of friendly, warm hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account, and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. 
And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! And I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. Now then, listen, I need to start with a bit of a retraction. <laughs> Charlie out of it. <laughs> I'm just going to throw him under the bus. Charlie said to me earlier, on, we're announcing the winner of the dog of the month. So uh, tell everyone it's the dog of the month. It's not the dog of the month. <laughs> We're not, we're not announcing that. I'm really sorry. That's what I was told. I just say what I'm told to say. Um, but anyway, that's not what we're doing now. But Kate is here. Kate, over Hi. you come. Good morning. Come this side. Come over oh, here. I'll come on, you. Closer. I can make a little space for you. <laughs> this is Kate. Kate's from upstairs. Oh, yeah. How are you? Um, from that dreamscape up there. Now, Kate, tell me. What are you doing here? Well, I am Kate from Marketing, that's my name. <laughs> and I'm here to announce a new competition, not a winner. You've, okay. got, you've got another week to enter the Dog of the Month competition. Oh, there's one more week. So there's what's the closing week. date? It's the, 40, the 14th. The 14th, I'm, yeah. okay. So um, you have got another week, so you can send all your cute dog pictures to me. It's like my favourite thing to do every day is have a cool. little look. But this week is actually a competition for cat lovers. Okay. So I'm kind of obsessed Good. with the cat competitions at the moment, but mm -hmm. today is actually National Cat Day. Um, so we thought, well, we did Cat of the Month mm -hmm. and that went really well. Everybody really loves their cats. And we thought we'd do a competition to win all 12 panels oh. of the quilt. I know, it's Ooh. worth 129.99, so I don't know how I've convinced them to let me have this prize. That's great. But yeah, <laughs> you can, and, and all you, it's a re, actually a really easy competition as well, yeah. I have to say. All you have to do is go onto Instagram, follow us, and uh, share a picture of your cat, or your, your, you know, if you've got like a family pet, yep. or you know, someone you know has got a really cute cat, tag us in the post on Instagram, so that's at Sewing Street. Um, and that's it. So you followed us on Instagram, shared your picture, and we'll pick a winner yep. next week. So if I'm already following Sewing Street on Instagram, I can still enter the competition. All I need to do is yep. post a picture of my cat, yep. and within the little description of the photograph, I just need to put at Sewing Street, that tag Sewing Street, yep. you now know. Exactly. So, Perfect. So tag us in the post, um, make sure the post is public so that we can see it. Yep. And um, if you've got any questions, just um, email the marketing underscore Sewing Street um, and marketing underscore SS at Sewing Street and yep. um, I can help you out. But, Perfect. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to That's see really all these. That's really cool. Yeah, so we'll <laughs> see all these cute pictures of cats. Basically, I just love my job getting to look at all these yeah, cute yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah, and in fairness, Kate, we did already, because we knew it was um, National Cat Day, we'd already had a few lovely photographs of cats sent in this morning. So you've already got the picture. All you need to do is on Instagram, make sure you're following Sewing Street and then tag Sewing Street in the description and underneath the picture of your cat at Sewing Street and you could win all 12 blocks from the Cat of the Month series. Yeah. That is awesome. It's really good. Is it? I mean, it's a mega prize. It's 129.99. So you could be in with winning if you follow us. Um, you've got a week to do it. Um, I also just wanted to recap the Dog of the Month competition. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you've got another week. So email us a picture of your dog to marketing underscore SS at 
sewingstreet.com um, and just include the name, the breed, um, you know, pure breed not required. It, it just has to mm. be a little cute doggy, which I think they all are. Yep. And um, we're going to pick the winner. And the prize is actually mega. You're going to get your dog printed on fabric and mm. sold at mm. Sewing Street. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, I love it. Yeah, a bit of a collector's item for whoever wins that one. Yeah. So, yeah, really excited. Fantastic. I love it, Kate. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for Kate. dropping by. Yeah, uh, yeah just for a little bit. But, Kate, um, for marketing, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a good Bye. day. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. Now then, um, we had so many messages in the last hour asking about the quilt. Said quilt behind me. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of recap that. Now I wonder if I can just have the fabrics, please, back on set. Um, for the sunflower dreamscapes and I'll just show you what I used in the quilt So it's a brand new fabric collection from Moda called sunflower dreamscapes And it's been done in conjunction with a Texan artist called Ira Kennedy um, He's particularly influenced by dot painting Aboriginal dot painting um, Here's a picture of him Yeah, really really fabulous. I mean this is not going to be his only collection that is so quilty anyway isn't it you know i'm just seeing kind of um stack and whack hexagons in the background just gorgeous now um this quilt that i'm behind i used the sunflower dreamscapes panel now this is actually basically a direct reproduction of one of ira's paintings um which is rather gorgeous in itself. So you get this amazing panel. It's kind of upside down, but yeah, you see it there. So you've got the amazing kind of dreamy dot painted sky. And then all those, it's actually, this is a painting called Five Sunflowers. So if you want to look it up and see the actual painting, just look up Five Sunflowers, Ira Kennedy, and you'll see the painting. But basically it's this, that you're getting it on a panel of fabric. So much you could do with this. I've used it very simply in a quilt. Um, I just trimmed it down to, I think, if I remember rightly, 32 and a half inches by 34 and a half inches, I think. Don't quote me on that. It's probably not actually, no, it was 40, no, 42. So I think it was 34 by 42 and a half inches. Um, it's basically the size of the panel. Um, once I'd done that, I then used this fabric right here. Uh, this one here uh, which is this one here which is the ombre stripe I used this for the first border two and a half inch cut I used this for the next border one and a half inch cut and then I did my outer border now I used this yellow for the main border but then in the corners I used the sunflower print and I also used this print to create some half square triangles, three half square triangles in each corner. Once everything was laid and quilted, with raindrops by the way, <laughs> couldn't resist, I bound the whole thing using this rather lovely um, blue fabric, which is also from the range. Now with my leftovers, this morning on the 8am show, I was able to make this little bag. This is from, uh, um, Bags for Life, thank you. Can't remember the name of my own book. This was all leftovers. Um, a little fold up, gorgeous shopping bag. Really, really easy. So be, to be able to make a quilt in a bag. And actually there were four of the fabrics from the range that I didn't even use at all. So um, there's so much value in getting the whole range. Um, just beautiful. Brand new range from Moda. Sunflower Dreamscapes. Have a little look hope that helps. I know lots of you wanted to know a little bit of information about that sunflower quilt. Now then, quilting tools I hear you say, yes, yes, absolutely. Now, first things first, fundamentals. I, I love the fact that we have these hours because we can really talk about fundamentals. And I know that it's easy to think that a lot of us, well, I've got all the things I need. I've got all the basic tools, but you know, things move on or we, you know, people invent new things. And, you know, I'd never considered in the past a rotating cutting mat, but they are 
absolutely superb. This is from the Quilted Bear. It's an 18 inch square cutting mat. So really fantastic size. This would be my kind of go-to size for scrap quilting, fat quarter quilting, stuff like that when I'm making my blocks. If you do foundation paper piecing, English paper piecing, you use templates, uh, you need a rotating cutting mat. Now, um, non-stick, non-slip even, non-slip backing. So without that, your cutting mat would slip and slide, and we've all been there and had our cutting mat slip and slide under us. But this non-slip backing means that when this is down on the table, I'm putting all of my weight behind this. I'm a stride workout, believe me. <laughs> it's not going anywhere, all right? So that's in the fixed position. You can easily unlock the four locks on the back flip it back over and now this is the rotating cutting mat. Now I don't know why but I always assumed a rotating cutting mat would be a cutting mat with a kind of little lazy Susan in the centre so that it would kind of rock and tilt a little bit from side to side while you were cutting. I never realised there was basically another mat underneath which means that the whole thing is completely stable. Um, such a clever, clever bit of kit. Um, the pink has been incredibly popular. We've only just launched it here on Sewing Street this week and it's been incredibly popular. So um, when are we going to use this? Well, we're going to use this for the vast majority of our cutting and our trimming, whether we're making half square triangles or, you know, kind of whatever job we're doing. So, for example, when you're doing your cutting, um, I always start by cleaning up one edge and I am right-handed so I always clean up the right hand side okay there's my little cleanup cut oh didn't do a very good job there that's better right so I've done my cleanup cut but now of course I need to flip the fabric around well with my rotating cutting mat I've got to start lifting up the fabric I can just turn the mat lay my fabric on top and I can do whatever cuts I need, okay? So once I've got that, if I want to cut squares out of this, I'm gonna turn them out again, clean up this edge right here, and then I'm gonna turn it again, and now I can start cutting out my squares, my rectangles, or whatever else I need, okay? So even for your most basic cutting, using a rotating cutting mat is a really smart idea. However, if you're going to do something that's perhaps a little bit more complex, say for example you're going to use a template, I'm just thinking Becky would you mind grabbing me the hexagon trim tool please from the rulers. Um, if you wanted to cut out something that was a little bit more complex, um, then this is when I think a rotating cutting mat really, really comes into its own because there you're cutting multiple sides and you know you're actually cutting quite a complex shape and of course if you were going to be moving the fabric um, you risk disturbing the shape but of course if you're going to use your rotating cutting mat then we can make our cut and it's safer because the one thing that you want to avoid doing is this kind of thing, this kind of thing, and in particular, this. And, um, you know, I think we're all guilty at some point of trying to cut, you know, in the wrong direction because it's easier. But if you've got a rotating cutting mat, you don't have to compromise your safety first and foremost, and also your, you know, straining your wrist by twisting and turning and putting pressure. And look at that, we've got our perfectly cut hexagon. So easy, so simple, um, and it all comes down to the right tool. So yes, of course, our first purchase is going to be a standard 18 by, what is it, about 30 cutting mat. But a rotating cutting mat, really, really smart idea to have in your stash. Now, we've also got a smaller version in the blue. 
this is really smart. <coughs> so this one is 12 inches square. So again, this is absolutely brilliant. If you're doing things like foundation paper piecing or cutting out templates, I mean, the template that I've just worked of, used, of course, would work perfectly well on this. And that's a big old hexagon, um, eight inch uh, sides hexagon. That would work. Um, but it's also really, really good for like those kind of smaller trimming jobs, foundation paper piecing, where you can have this next to your sewing machine, sew a seam onto your mat, fold, trim off. And of course, if you need the, to change the angle that you're cutting at, it just makes it so much easier to trim those sides down. Another thing I like a small rotating cutting mat for is trimming dog ears. Um, so for example, if you've made your little half square triangles and you want to trim off the points, it's very tempting, very tempting to trim and then and start doing this because it hardly seems worth picking up and turning round just to trim off a little dog ear. But with your rotating cutting mat, you can do that quick and easy. Really nice colour that, isn't it? absolutely gorgeous and if it ever comes apart and it will come apart like this please don't think you've broken it and are there supposed to be screws holding it together there absolutely aren't all you need to do to put it back together is make sure white to white and then you just want to line up these little cutouts with the locks and then push those locks out and now this is fixed and it's not going to rotate you've got that fabulous non-stick and of course, when you're using the rotating function as well, still not going to go anywhere, but it will rotate. Absolutely love it. Love, love, love it. Ever so clever. Great price too. $16.99 for your 12 by 12 rotating cutting mat. Now then, a couple of rulers that I particularly wanted to talk about in this hour. Okay, let me grab them. So, <clears throat> here's the first one. It's the Creative Grids PZ02. Now then, I've told this story before, so if you've heard this, please forgive me for repeating myself. But, this is the Creative Grids ruler. <coughs> 29.99. And this creates flying geese, and that's flying geese from a one by two, little tiny one by two flying geese. You can do one and a half by three, two by four, two and a half by five, three by six, three and a half by seven, right up to six by 12. So there is a massive range of sizes there of flying geese. Uh, half square triangles, you can do again everything from a uh, one inch finished up to six inch finished half square triangles and all those half sizes in between and then you can also make quarter square triangles or hourglass blocks using that flying geese side so they will go everything from uh, two inch finish right up to 12 inch finish, 12 inch finished uh, <coughs> hourglass block. Now then, I was asked to use this a couple of months ago and I'll be honest with you, initially I thought, look, I've got my six by 12 ruler. I've been making half square triangles, quarter square triangles and flying geese forever. Do I really need a special ruler for this? And then I tried it and specifically I tried it because I was making, I am still making Lady of the Lake blocks, which is basically a half square triangle, large half square triangle with little half square triangles all around the outside. Okay, really gorgeous block, but it requires 21 half square triangles per block and my blocks are nine inches finished. So that meant I was having to use two and three eighths inch strips, cut down into squares, mark the diagonal, so either suck fiddly little bits, loads of marking, loads of awkward measuring, trimming down, you name it. And I just thought this 
quilt is going to take me forever and I thought I'll just try and see whether this block will help because what I needed was one and a half inch finished um, half square triangles yeah so that would mean a two and three eighths inch square normally but with this if I want to make a one and a half inch half square triangle I just need to cut a two inch strip so let's grab some fabric and I'll show you how easy it is to do let's grab a little bit okay so I'm going to use my rotating cutting mat again <coughs> really like the blue it's gorgeous isn't it right then oh I always forget to unlock it so let's get that unlocked and then I'm going to use the very lightest part of this fabric I'm using the sunflower dreamscapes again because it is my new favorite so I just need two inch wide strips so of course cutting a two inch strip to start with is so much easier than trying to cut a two and three eighths inch strip it shouldn't be harder but let's face it it is you're having to line up your ruler on a part of the the ruler that's more awkward or less used um, I want this strip to be the same sort of length so I'm just going to cut a little bit of fabric so we'll clean that up and we'll rotate oh sorry earpiece keeps falling out there we go I'll push it right in until I feel it touch my brain okay right so we've got that so I've got my two strips let's get rid of all the extra fabric okay right so now what I'm going to do because I'm going to make multiples is I'm going to layer the two fabrics together right sides together and then I'm going to grab my tool right then so what you'll see first of all is that you lay two inch strip it says here two inch strip you line that up with the bottom of your strip now the first thing you'll notice is that this does not go off into a point there is a blunt end and it's quite deliberate so don't be alarmed by that so I'm going to cut here and I'm also just going to rotate this around and I'm just going to trim a straight edge as well so there's my little cleanup cut so I've got my first pair and um, when you're doing this you want to make sure uh, that you leave the pairs together because this is smart stacking it's smart stacking this means that we've already got our fabrics right sides together ready to sew then I can simply take my patches straight to the machine so I'm just going to keep flipping my ruler back and forth now I know this feels a bit old school doesn't it because we're so used to doing squares drawing a line but have you ever stopped to consider whether stopping and drawing that line and is it accurate and sewing either side and trimming apart whether that does actually end up being any quicker than just cutting out triangles in the first place because at the end of the day that's the action that you end up doing isn't it you're just cutting and sewing in a different order but ultimately you're cutting out triangles um, I know we say well then you've got a bias edge but I mean you're not gonna start juggling with these pieces of fabric oh let me just feed dogs back up that old chestnut and I'm gonna start sewing so I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance there we go just get that lined up so then it's a case of get to your sewing machine and chain piece my fabrics are already stacked together again this is another boon of having the small rotating cutting mat because it's so easy then to take that rotating cutting mat to your machine and use it as like a little tray everything's all together and you see this now I'd have still been marking the diagonal wouldn't I on my squares 
and then once I've sewn either side I've still got to cut it apart into triangles and then start pressing but this way I've kind of cut out what I wanted in the first place okay so I've got all my half square triangles now sewn together in a long line so now I can clip them apart set my seam allowance of course I'm not going to grab an iron out just for this but I will use my um, cutting mat again and then I'm just going to flip these open and press towards the dark side and before you know it you've made your half square triangles and they are really really accurate I was so impressed when I tried this absolutely brill and there's no trimming down needed here all I would do <coughs> is just get in there and just trim off that last dog ear there isn't one on one side so you've only got one dog ear to clip off so again the whole process is simplified even though it feels like stepping backwards because you're sewing triangles together rather than sewing along a square but ultimately you're doing all the same things except this time you're not having to cut out something awkward you're not having to draw lines um, you're straight to the sewing easy peasy really nice and quick you use exactly the same process if you're going to make flying geese so on your ruler I'll move this out of the way for a second. On your ruler, you've got the half square triangle side, okay? And then you've also got the flying geese side. Um, and so if you're gonna make quarter square triangles, you're gonna use this shape. So you're gonna use a one inch strip, a one and a half, a two inch, a two and a half inch strip, easy. There's never any weird or odd sizes, three eighths, seven eighths, it's always full inch, or an inch and a half um, <clears throat> and then if you're making flying geese then you're going to cut out this in your geese fabric and you're going to cut out two of these in your sky fabric and then sew them together and again I know for lots of us who only ever learnt the no waste or the stitch and flip method it seems like a backward step cutting out the triangles and sewing them together but I mean it sustained our quilting sisters and brothers for you know hundreds and hundreds of years didn't it um, it's a it's still a brilliant method and if you've never tried it give it a go give it a go okay so that was that ruler I wanted to show you the other one I wanted to just share with you is the log cabin trim tool <coughs> So the Log Cabin Trim Tool is from Creative Grids. I love Log Cabin. <clears throat> it's an absolute classic. Um, now, the Log Cabin Trim Tool from Creative Grids allows you to create three different styles of Log Cabin. Um, and it creates an eight inch finished log cabin. Of course, if you wanted to make a smaller block, you can, it will just have less logs, just add less logs. Um, but let me just show you here on this. I don't know if you can get close enough, but you can make the traditional log cabin, which has a dark side and a light side, okay? You can also make what's called courthouse steps. And this is where you will add, rather than adding to one side, two, three, four, and kind of going clockwise, with courthouse steps, you add two opposite sides and trim, two opposite sides and trim. So what you end up with, you know, a little bit like a stair, like a grand staircase, you can sort of see it, can't you? Um, you end up with two light sides, two dark sides, usually or you can do it with different colours. And when you sew those together, you almost get the illusion of like cir circles, almost in your piecing. All right, then the last log cabin that you can create is called a half log cabin. And you can see that up in this top corner. So you have the square, and then rather than adding to four sides, you only add to two sides, and you add to the same two sides, all your logs. So it creates this, can you see almost like a braided effect? It's really lovely, um, and it does give you loads and loads of possibilities. So that's the um, log cabin trim tool. 
if you want to watch a video of it being used, um, if you go onto YouTube and search Creative Grids Log Cabin Trim Tool, you can watch a full demonstration. All right, good. I'm going to pop that to one side. So they were the two rulers I wanted to share with you. Now, next up, I mentioned in the last hour about using an LED light box for tracing. So let me just grab this over. Uh, is this a touch screen or? Oh, it's here, isn't it? There we go. So there's three different levels of brightness. So now I don't know, can we put the lights down or take those lights down low? I mean, it's not necessary, but I just like doing it. Yeah, okay, lovely, thank you. The lights are low, take those lights low. Oh gosh, that's, just come back to me a second. That's so much more flattering, isn't it? Hi everybody. If I ever come in and feel really rough and it starts like this, it's not a fault. It's not a fault. Okay, right then, back to the light box. <laughs> okay, so this is off, obviously. There's your lowest light setting. I feel like I should be doing that kind of, you know. Oh, it's magical, isn't it? Are you transported? Oh, it's like Jurassic Park, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> that's the lowest light setting. That's medium. You really, really shouldn't encourage me. And that's the brightest. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. All right. Now then, can I just borrow the Debbie Harris pattern, please? The Debbie Harris pattern. Yeah, from the last hour. Oh, I've got one here. You're all right. You got. I've got one here. <coughs> right then. Let me just pop that down. So look at how clear, you might have to get a little closer, but look how clear that is. It is so, so easy to see all of those elements. So if you were tracing out, say an applique, or you were doing maybe some lovely Mandy Shaw red work design, um, it's so, so easy to trace out. You might be doing an applique guide to follow for hand turned, needle turned or machine turned applique. But you can see everything so, so clearly through that light box. So these are the free motion embroidery lines. We're just going to trace these down. Now remember, of course, you can have all sorts of levels, whatever suits the project you're working on best. And don't always assume that the brightest setting is the most appropriate. Don't always go automatically for that. Yeah. Now then, one of the things you're also getting with this uh, mat, with this um, light box rather, is you get an A3 translucent cutting mat. So you can actually, if you were cutting around something, say for example, a template, maybe it was like a hexagonal template shape or something like that. So for example, I mean, it's a bit too small to try and cut, but if I was to put that under there, I don't know if you can see this, I. I can. I suppose you'd need this to be a single sheet, wouldn't you, really? And pop this under. Right, there we go. So you can see the hexagon, and then you've got the cutting mat on top. Um, you could then cut, so for example, if you were cutting something like template plastic to create your, your templates, you could then put your template plastic on top, and then you would then be able to rotary cut around seeing through your template plastic and seeing the template underneath. So not having to trace it first and uh, then try and do it, but actually trace straight through onto the template. Really, really clever, really clever. Um, if you've never tried using a light box before, if you've done what I've always done in the past, which is that thing, you know, where you tape it to the window and just pray that the neighbours don't see what you're doing. Otherwise, it just <laughs> you do end up looking a little strange. <clears throat> but I do that quite often. 
Um, but a light box is so, so much easier. So much easier. So I'm just going to lay this back down. And you can line everything up so easily. And then carry on with your tracing. Oh, I can hear some very funny shouting from somewhere. Is it from one of the other studios? There we go. Just keep on drawing around that. Super easy. So don't forget this might be a quilting pattern. So for example, you might have layered up your whole, well not layered your quilt, if you've got your quilt top all finished and you want to transfer qu a quilting design, say for example, a feathered wreath into a plain block. You know, you don't have to trace that onto the individual square of fabric, although it might be easier to do, you know, less bulky. Um, there are some uh, designs that actually go over piecing, so you need the whole thing to be put together before you can do that. Um, but you can see straight through and you can uh, trace your quilting design onto your fabric and then just take that straight to your sewing machine, layer it up and then quilt. Absolutely fab. Now then, at the moment the price is £80.98, but lovely producer Ben is going to do a little magic. Cool, that's a good one. 64 and back and back. Oh, I can't see. 64.99. 64.99. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Absolutely fantastic. 64.99. That's your light box. Absolutely brilliant. Really, really good size as well. This is A3. And remember, you're getting your light box, which has three different light levels low, medium, bright. It's also got measurements, so if you wanted to sort of precisely place something, great for paper crafting as well as fabrics as well, of course. And then you've also got your cutting mat, your see-through cutting mat on top. Now this is metric, okay? So it's in centimeters, but of course, if you're using it as a cutting mat and you're actually cutting a template that's underneath, then the markings really don't matter. Uh, now, Donna's got in touch with in the West Midlands to say, Morning, Stuart. I bought my light box to trace a pattern for from an embroidery gift that my husband bought for me. It made it so much easier. I think that's a really good point, Donna. It just makes your life so much easier. And you get to the good bit. Uh, a fab demo. Hubby has one of these for his art, but I will soon be borrowing it. Collector in Merseyside. Mm. Well, it's sharing, isn't it? It's a bit of sharing. <laughs> Love that. Okay, right. I'm going to pop the light box to one side. <coughs> Now then, the Brother Sewing Machine. Now then, I was using this earlier to make the bag. Uh, Debbie was also using it to make her blocks for her quilt. And um, it's just a super, super uh, sewing machine. Let me just turn this around. I'll give you a, a little bit of a tour. So this is the Brother FS250. Uh, it's a brilliant all-rounder. So I often get asked, what should I look for in a sewing machine? Best advice I can give is, if you're like the vast majority of sewers, you need a sewing machine that is a good all-rounder and one that will grow with you as you grow as a sewer. Now I'm not saying you're a beginner and you know, but it might be that your passion for the last 20 years has been patchwork and quilting. Well, that's great. Your brother FS250 is gonna cover you for every angle. But maybe this year you got really inspired by the sewing bee and like, you know what? I want to make some clothes. I'm going to do some dressmaking. Will your brother FS250 still support you? Absolutely. You've got 250 stitches, utility stitches. I mean, everything you could possibly need, including overlocking and kind of over edge stitching uh, stitches 
10 different buttonholes, button sewing function. You've got loads of decorative stitches as well. How clever is this little chart? You've got loads of embroidery, decorative embroidery stitches. You've also got some stitches which are mirrored that are flipped, which is really nice to do two rows, one one way, one going the other, adds an extra little dimension to things like hems. Now also look at the top here, you've got three alphabets. They're all uppercase, you've got solid, you've got cursive, and you've got outline. Now also, although it's not so easy to see, if I just tilt it forward, you've also got all your numbers, all your punctuation, and you've also got some, you know, European letters there as well, kind of umlaut and accents and that sort of thing, Cedilla. So that's fab. So if you have a Francoise in the family, not a problem. Now then, foot package wise, I think we've got a slide actually uh, to show you what kind of foot package you get. This is above and beyond, it really is. Uh, it's amazing. So you get all of your regular feet. <coughs> so zip foot, buttonhole foot, overcasting, blind hem, your monogramming or embroidery, button attaching foot, utility foot, you know, regular foot. But then, and this is the bit that always amazes me, you've got these seven extra feet, which are for dressmaking. You've got the straight stitch foot, brilliant for quilting that one as well. You've got the zipper and piping foot, fully adjustable. You've got a gathering foot, a five pin tuck, a five groove pin tuck foot, a non-stick foot. Now this is brilliant if you like to sew with things like PU, pleather, oil cloth, those kind of tricky sticky fabrics. You've also got an adjustable bias binding attaching foot and a narrow hemmer, something for doing like rolled hems on silk, satin, cotton, lace, brilliant. Um, you're also getting um, an extra wide table that you can slide on. You can drop your feed dogs, you get a hard case cover. It's an absolutely superb machine. Now, there's two things you don't get with this machine, and I always like to be upfront about this. You don't get a darning foot, and you don't get a walking foot, okay? So they are two feet that I would strongly recommend that you add in. Now, um, you brother, darning foot, brother, walking foot, <coughs> very affordable to get both of those feet as an add-on, if they would be relevant for you. If you're never going to do free motion quilting or uh, free motion applique, it's not an issue. You don't need the darning foot. But if you are going to do those things, I would buy both of those. Um, but you get so many other feet. It's absolutely remarkable. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now then, let me just turn it around for a second and show you from the back. Here's your feed dog control so to drop your feed dogs you're just going to push that button the feed dogs will drop away when you return that button the feed dogs don't automatically come up don't panic as soon as you take your first stitch the feed dogs pop back up again they're just part of that motor of taking the first stitch okay now another thing in this sheet oh sorry lift it lift it uh, the other thing that you've got on your brother FS250 is you've got a drop top bobbin, which I absolutely love. So clear view, so you can see what colour bobbin thread you've got, how much thread is on the machine too. Really useful before you start sewing a long seam. If you pop this little button and the plate comes out and then your bobbin will just uh, flick straight out. Very difficult to do back to front. But there's the bobbin, out it goes. And then when you come to put your bobbin back in, all you've got to do is put it in like a letter P. So in it goes, and then you've got this little groove to follow with the thread. You've even got a little thread cutter, let me show you. It's a little, there's the end of the thread there, you've got a little thread cutter that even cuts the end of the thread away. And uh, you don't have to pull the bobbin thread up to the surface before you can start sewing. Um, you can just start sewing. Very, very easy to use. 
It's a super popular machine. I see it ever such a lot in workshops because if you've got one of those really big, expensive, heavy sewing machines, the kind of thing that really lives in the sewing room and never leaves, um, you need an extra sewing machine to take along to your classes. This is a great option. But also, just it's a brilliant all-rounder. So if this is your only sewing machine, you know it's gonna cover all the bases. Okay. That's your brother FS250. Now, <coughs> let me grab them. Now then, really popular these bags. Lots of you have spotted these on pre-order. Now what you're getting here, and this might seem a bit odd, you know, you think, well, we're a sewing channel, wouldn't I make the bag? But you know, I don't make every bag I use, definitely not. And sometimes there are bags which you just think, oh, that's such a good buy, and it's so useful. So it's got a circular base, it's a bucket bag, okay? And then what you've got is all of these concertina pockets all the way around the outside. There's absolutely loads, they go all the way around the outside. You've got like a thick rope almost around the inside which holds the bag open and then inside the bag you've got another set of concertina pockets all the way around the inside. So as soon as I saw this bag, check out this, comfort grip, really like that, so stylish and completely sort of gender neutral. Really like that, really like that. Um, as soon as I saw it, I instantly thought, well, what a brilliant workshop bag. So I've got my machine feet, I've got the foot pedal for my machine and the cord. I've got my needles and my pins. I've got buttons, zips, you name it. Rotary cutter. And then inside I've perhaps got fat quarters, patterns, and then I've got the bulk of my fabric in there. I'm gonna bring my project home. So easy to throw everything in there for a workshop. But also, what about knitting and crochet? Your needles, your double pointed needles, your crochet hooks. What about things like your stitch markers? And again, your patterns. Inside there is so much room for all of your yarn, your work in progress as well. And you can just have that literally sitting next to you on the train, you know, at work during lunch break or whatever, um, or in the house. Um, but also, what a great bag for things like gardening. So you might have things like secateurs, a little trowel and a fork, uh, things like, you know, like a mini scarifier for breaking up the soil, a little hoe, seed packets, Dibber. Now look at me all this. I've watched Gardener's World. I know the terms. I know the terms. And then in there, you might have your bag of compost. You might be using this as your potting bag. I mean, it's really sturdy canvas. Dog grooming equipment, your toys, your uh, maybe things like your tack bag if you've got horses. What about as a really useful baby bag as well? So things like nappies, lotions, nappy pins, are they still a thing? I don't know. I have ducklings and a cat, you know. Um, I'd probably carry little ducklings in there. <laughs> we did have to put them all in a bucket the other day to move them, which was hilarious. Anyway, the price is $22.99. Or is it? Or is it $22.99? The price is going down. If you've already checked out, lots of you have grabbed this. You're only going to pay $17.99. Now, that is in the blue, which I think is completely gorgeous. I love that. And I love the tan faux leather and the tan faux suede. I think that is really smart, that little trim. But <clears throat> how good does it look in green? This is gorgeous. <clears throat> now I do think this does look very gardening, doesn't it? It's ideal for a gardening bag. But I mean, you might just really like green. It's exactly the same bag. Perhaps you can see a little bit more clearly, actually, if I show you inside the bag. Susie in Worcestershire's got in touch to say, I'd use this bag for camping. So useful for so many things too. Brilliant point. Camping at the weekend, actually. Uh, tent pegs, hammer, there, an SOS flare. 
<laughs> yeah, other bits and bobs in there. Gin, Prosecco, glasses, good, excellent. Stay with me. <laughs> what about a picnic bag? I was saying yesterday, Charlie and I have what we call our takeaway bag because during lockdown, we got into the habit when we were allowed to sort of travel a little more further afield. We used to go, we'd get a takeaway, but rather than take it home, we'd go and find a nice sort of spot in the country or, you know, a reservoir, somewhere like that. And then we'd have our takeaway there. And we have, but we still have it because we love doing it so much. So we have our takeaway bag permanently set up. And it's got things like knives and forks, chopsticks, it's got napkins, it's got, we've got things like soy sauce and ketchup, vinegar, salt and pepper, all that kind of stuff. And then literally we can chuck a couple of drinks in there, we're straight off in the van or the car, and then the fish and chips can go in there as well, and we're, we're all good to go. Super useful. Now, another thing that I do every year, and I've done this for years, is to create little like hampers for people for, as Christmas presents. I love a little hamper, a little pamper hamper, a little gardening hamper, sewing hamper, baby hamper. And what I used to do was buy wicker baskets, round or oval or whatever to put them in. But let's be perfectly honest, they just get thrown away. They don't really get used again. Occasionally they do, but not often. Whereas now I'm looking for useful containers. So I buy things like metal trugs or planters, and then I'll fill that with things, toiletry things or, or um, gardening -y things, or I'll look for little bags. Um, because then it really does form part of the gift. And you could put a few gardening things in here, some gardening gloves, a few packets of seeds, maybe a bag of compost and a couple of pots. And then, you know what as well, this gets me out of wrapping. Because I told you before, I am useless at wrapping anything. Uh, although I'm really good at wrapping, if you know what I mean. Um, I just put a bow on the top. Happy birthday. Love it. Really love it. $17.99 is an amazing price. This is the forest green. Remember the other option is the navy. What about a Lego bag? All the Lego in there. If you want to pre-sort anything in there. adventure holidays, boating holidays, when I'm at the coast and I go nautique, that particular style. It has got a lovely kind of beachy feel to it, hasn't it? Great, I love those, really, really useful. Now then, <coughs> we're gonna go to a little break. Uh, I'm going to go and powder my nose. I'll see you in three minutes. Debbie Harris is going to be back with a brand new fabric range called Promenade from Moda. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harbour. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes. It's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. 
you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Now, now then, here's a question. Why walk when you can promenade? Hmm? Discuss. I say that because we're launching a brand new collection from Moda today with Debbie Harris and it is pretty. Oh, so pretty, isn't it though? I just love it. You know, this year I've really got into pretty sort of shabby chic fabrics and colorways. I think, I don't know, this year I want a little more softness, a little bit more romance, Charlie, if you're watching. You know, but that softness and lightness and delicateness, I'm really into silvery greys and mm. soft gentle colours at the moment despite the fact that I just made the sunflower wall hanging and loved every minute of it but I am loving the calmness and the beauty of these fabrics this is the brand new collection from Moda it's called Promenade and what a gorgeous collection it is now what I've shown you here is the mega bundle which I think is stonking value you're paying £67.41 and what you're getting within that is 10 half metres, so five full metres of fabric. Now £67.41 is a fab price, isn't it? 
really fab price. Now that is a fab price for two reasons. We do great prices here at Sewing Street, but also you're actually not paying for 10 half meters. You're only paying for nine of them. Yeah, yeah. 6.74, yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Normally 7.49 per half meter, right? That's good. So that's a fantastic saving. You won't get that at Festival of Quilts. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. You get 10 half meters, beautiful quality mode of fabric. It is absolutely stunning. Let me show you the individual fabrics, just quick whiz through. And then of course we will look at these by the half meter. So I love, love, love the combination of floral fabrics with paisleys. There is something so classic, so country house mm. about that. It's really country house. This has a real, well, this has a bit of a Sanderson look mm. to me and I've always loved a bit of Sanderson. Really gorgeous, yeah. And then let me show you next. I'm gonna keep kind of keep them out and layer them a little bit so you can see that I'm just living for, I think is beautiful. It's that, it's not quite gray. It's the color of this year, it's, it's grayish. Mm. It's grayish because it's that beigey, taupey toned gray, which is so much softer and warmer and easier to live with than your standard kind of silvery, cold, quite industrial gray. Okay, now then let's get into a little bit of paisley action. Love that. Interesting story, Paisley gets its name from Scotland, of course, the town in Scotland, Paisley, but because of the weaving industry there, paisley shawls, or well, they weren't, they weren't called paisley shawls, really, really popular in Victorian times, had been found there by sort of, you know, uh, the colonizers. And it was then brought the style back to Britain and then manufacture of this, these beautiful Indian shawls began in Paisley and they became known as Paisley shawls. Mm -hmm. And then we just know now the, the design is Paisley. Beautiful floral, look at that. It's so gentle, soft summer meadow really beautiful now then a nice little ditzy floral nice bit of lightness and brightness there with the ivory now let's go big and floral again so now we've got this lovely big floral so straight away i'm thinking about all these lovely romantic quilts and cushions and throws throw pillows that is gorgeous isn't it with that lovely peachy background Again, that lovely soft floral on a white background. Now wait till you see this paisley. That's delicious, isn't it? Absolutely delicious. Yeah, there's such a gorgeous sort of movement to paisley, yeah. isn't there? It's a glorious design. It never ever gets tired for me, Timeless, paisley. Isn't it? it really Timeless. is. It really is. And it looks good in modern or traditional settings. Really pretty little floral, that. And then, you know, I often say this my favourite fabrics are often the simplest yeah. ones. I just love this print. Isn't that beautiful? This is the same as, do you remember the silvery grey version? I know, this one done in, well it's almost like um, a negative, isn't it? A positive negative version. Absolutely lovely. Really beautiful range this. Now your mega bundle features all 10 fabrics, you make a saving, one half meter is completely free. I always say pick the fabric you love the best and say I'm having that one for free. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's stunning isn't it? So you kind of shabby chic style quilt patterns are going to look amazing in this. The simplest of quilt patterns, a nine patch. Mm. would look beautiful mm. absolutely gorgeous and there's plenty of contrast between the darker shades the lighter shades the medium shades 
you know you can see even between these two fabrics here loads of contrast so if you're doing things like half square triangles flying geese there's plenty of contrast between those fabrics also don't be afraid to throw in plenty of solid white or ivory or a, a pastel peach or a pale green in there or a pale gray whatever would work best in your your home add those in gorgeous a message morning Stuart thank you for the nod to our weaving history lots of love from Paisley in Scotland Lorna I love Paisley I had a friend from uni who, who was from Paisley and I used to go up and visit and of course the home of coats as well coats thread and yeah amazing you of course know much much more about the history than me but I do love our our British history of, of weaving and yarn and fabric um, and really it was yeah it was, it was weaving and thread wasn't it that Paisley was built on beautiful beautiful place great place to visit now then let's have a little look through them indiv individually let's have a little look I'm gonna pop those to one side and let's just go through them in the order that I showed them so this first one is DY46 this is that lovely big blousy open floral hands there for scale yeah gorgeous <coughs> nice for a bit of dressmaking too that one very very nice or home deck you know simple cushions front and back bit of piping very very nice now this next one px20 not sure whether this is my favorite or my second favorite but it's definitely a contender just lovely absolutely gorgeous and just again just to show you the sort of scale so it's a kind of medium large scale but still just beautiful lends itself very well to home deck that way doesn't it it's not you don't want anything too tiny for home decor now this one is mt72 this is a beautiful open paisley ever so pretty love that soft green soft pink Mm, yeah it's soft and gentle but there's plenty of contrast in there because um, I'm you know I'm a high contrast kind of guy you'll see in a lot of my quilts there's a lot of strong contrast and strong colors but it is achievable with softer fabrics this is VM12 that's really gorgeous isn't it mm. Think about things like a little like camisole and pajama mm. bottoms with a little bit of broderie anglais or lace mm. trim would be so pretty. What about quilted makeup bags and toiletry bags? Mm. Lovely bit of cross hatching. Mm. Really nice. Uh, NM52. There we go. And it's lovely to see, you know, Moda never skimp. If it needs 13 colours, would you believe there are 13 colours? There they are, 13 colours. And of course it all adds to the expense of producing a fabric. This is nice on the edge, there's a little quote. A walk in nature walks the soul back home. It's a quote from Mary Davis. Oh, that's nice. It's lovely. Mm. I've got to do a selfless plug now as well, just to say in September my new sock yarn range comes out which is called walking in nature oh yeah very nice. that launches in september i can't help myself now then you should do that ben do 18 would this be a fun idea little straw poll here mm -hmm. feel free to say no at home but would you would you think it would be fun if the guys at Sewing Street actually put a little range of fabrics together ourselves and had them printed. Would that be fun? The mm. Sewing Street fabric collection? Mm. We'll get input. It'd be eclectic, I'm telling you. Yeah? Camera operator Becky could design a little something. Producer Ben, director Charlie. I'd ask everybody. This is beautiful, isn't it? This is your large floral, 749 per half meter. 
Remember, best value, if you want it, is the mega bundle of 10 half meters, because you only actually pay for four and a half. Now then, lovely soft floral ZL65. Again, pretty, pretty, pretty. 14 colors this time, 14 colors. Now, if you wanted to put, you know, you want to pick out some colors here <coughs> for coordinates or piping or whatever, have a little look along that band. Just be aware, I know it's a, an often given tip to use that band. Just be aware that this does show every single color and it doesn't necessarily tell you the proportions that they're used in the fabric. So for example, you can leap on a color and think, oh, I'll use that. But keep those in mind but then look at your fabric and kind of I take my glasses off or squint and I just see what color kind of pops out at me and that's generally the color that I'll go with mm. for a piping or a trim or mm. something like that depends what effect you want I think the really soft blue mm. for a piping would be gorgeous and I perhaps would quilt this with a soft gray blue mm. rather than a white so that your quilting's a little bit more noticeable and has just a little bit more impact. So don't just use those colour spots for uh, inspiration for fabric, use them for your thread as well. Next one is TQ91. Now I need to tell you half the stock of the Mega Bundle is already gone. It's going to sell out really quickly because we don't have huge quantities of any of these fabrics. That's lovely, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. See, this appeals to my stronger colours mm. side because it's got stronger shades in there. But team that with, you know, plenty of white and you'll have a lovely dreamy romantic project. What about a gift for newlyweds? PL30. Amazing. Just pretty little nosegays. Those little sprigs of florals. Pretty, pretty. And then last fabric. I went and saved the best for last. <laughs> I just keep hoping that a music producer is watching, thinking, we found him. We found, how, how many years have we been searching? We, he was there all the time. He was there all the time. Love that fabric so much. <laughs> gorgeous gorgeous oh I've been promoted to lead vocals director Charlie's just say he'd have me on lead vocals you say that now Charlie I was once in a production of Oliver the musical I was given the only non-singing role Mr Brownlow if you're interested all right I'm going to hand over to you, Debbie. Thank you. Do you want to do like Shall an we... awkward shuffle? Does it have to be awkward? Well, no, but I think it's more fun if it is. I'm going to do it doing... in the style of I've... a crab. Ready? Okay. Let's cross over. I've got my tea. There we go. You're just being silly now. Well, so I think right. that was pretty, that was awkward <laughs> enough for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm sure it could have been more. <laughs> Debbie. Yes, Stuart. Hello, Hi, my love. Hi, I'm back. I'm <laughs> yes, back. Yes, you are. With these delightful, delicious i think yeah, you called them yeah. oh, what do you think they're lovely aren't what did they? you think when they arrived oh i was what's the word happy doesn't doesn't <laughs> capture it joyful joyful delighted yeah they are they are beautiful yeah we I love think our delightful fabrics. is yeah they are delightful we aren't love, they yeah they are just <coughs> so they're pretty aren't mm -hmm, they they're mm -hmm. very pretty and i like the way that they as you said all they're different to each other but yep. they all complement each other don't they they do really well so nice for nice. baby makes as well i'm thinking yeah they're very soft mm -hmm. aren't they and subtle and they especially these colors like you said they <coughs> don't they're not your traditional blues pinks or lemons no. for a nursery they're nice and subtle and classic they are they're really pretty a really little bit country pretty. Mm. Yeah. Vintage. That's Restful the and vintage. when you were talking about them. Vintage was the word. Yeah. That came gorgeous. To mind. Gorgeous. 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 So you're going to make a little project with them. I am. Grab it down. Let's have a little I, look. Oh, shall we have a look at the yeah, cushion? Yeah, yeah, I love it. This is the cushion that I made with them. So just as you were saying, Stuart, just to get that contrast between the darker shades 
and then the lighter shades so these are the same fabrics mm -hmm. those are the same but just the different contrast oh cool i like that um shades <coughs> same with this one so this is the smaller flower in the pink or peachy color and then the cream background and then the paisleys together and they look so different i don't really they? like that i really like that yeah so now you're making my heart sing right now because you've done a bit of curved piecing oh Love it. Do you love curve? Uh, do you know love I it. have never done it before? Stop it! And you produce always, that? Yeah. It's really I good. I always stick with straight lines. Okay. I love a hexi. I love a square patchwork. Yeah. Um, yeah. Never really appealed to me the circles, but I love this. Mm. And what I then and then on the back I've done this one. So you've got these large, this the larger print mm -hmm. with that nice sort of plainish, that silvery one that you like. I love it. Um, so I've just done a solid circle on that one. Really um, cute. And what I liked was, I don't know, just something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how easy it is. Well, I'm hoping you're going to show well, me how easy it is. It is. It, is easy. it doesn't look easy at the moment. I'm oh, thinking it, that looks me, hard. You know me, Stuart. I like to make it look difficult, but actually it's really easy. Fab. That's my thing, I think. I love it. I love it. So, where do we start? So, I've got the this Stripology <coughs> non-slip circle savvy ruler. Now, do you mind just can I take the mat away for a sec? Go on then. That just nice so that we can see mat. the ruler. I know it's lovely. Yeah, so you can see it better, can't you there? So, it's this is a really nice Stripology one. So, it's got the nice the creative grids, the nice grippy bit on the back yep. so it grips to your fabric. Then you've got the increments here in half measurements, so three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, you've got the full three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I see. So you've got the full increments here and the half increments here. So we can cut quarter, half, and full circles in all those different sizes. Yes. Awesome. Oh, yes. Awesome. So there's different ways of doing it, as you would expect. Yeah, and bring your mat back with... now. Oh, OK, thank you. I was going to... Do you want to... it to be twisty and turny, or do you want it... Uh, no, I like it, so it's in one place. In one place, no Solid, problem. thank you. I am going to be a little bit OCD and just make sure that I've got... I like to have the numbers there. If that's Nothing okay. wrong with that. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why we always have to justify why we do things. Why don't we just do it? So I'm just having the numbers at the bottom. Sure. Anyway, the, um, the instructions, as they always are with Creative Grids, really clear, really uh, explanatory. You can watch a video as you well, can can't watch you, the video. if you're more of a visual learner. Yeah, you can watch the... If you can use this QR code, if you're very techie, you can um, scan that QR code into your phone and then it'll take you straight to the video. Um, lots of different techniques, lots of things on YouTube and whatnot. And let's be honest, actually, from, from we've both pieced curves now. Mm -hmm. Would you agree that actually the hardest bit of doing circles or curved piecing is cutting out yeah, absolutely because it's not vroom 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 yeah but with your clever circle ruler it's easy it just uh, absolutely and accurate. and accurate and it is i mean i like the stripology anyway i mm. use them a lot and this one is exactly the same ch -ch with your rotary cutter and it makes it so much easier. So how do we cut out the actual circle part? So if you want to, I'm just looking for, because I've got all my little odds and ends mm -hmm. here. So let's take a reasonably size. Do you want to give it a press? And Oh, would you? Yeah, of course I will. I'm guessing You know here, me and iron in. I know. There. You, or is it just that you like looking after me, Stuart? I like to look after, I like to keep you on the straight and narrow, Debbie. Oh, oh, well, I need it, I need it. What are you saying? So this is ironed flat, but do you need it folding? I'd like it folding into quarters, into please. Into quarters, okay, so no problem. So in half problem. and yep. then in half again. Yep. Just in case you weren't sure what a quarter. That's fine. <laughs> Debbie, I always do exactly the same thing. I mansplain everything, but, you know, I always put it down to when I was a teacher, you know, and mm. I, you, you try and preempt all the questions yeah, absolutely. that 30 children might ask mm. you, and there'll be someone in there that doesn't quite understand that. Yeah, so. and instead of going, you know, like you want to, say, for goodness sake, 
yeah. you have to go, all right, let me put it another way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about this? Exactly. Fold it into quarters. So you just get used to that way of talking, don't right, you? Right, that's in quarters, Thank you. folds there and there. Thank you, Stuart, that's fab. Pleasure. So before I put that under the ruler, I just want, I hope you can see this, that on the ruler, you've got these lines here and you have a line that says fold line. So you've got this vert uh, horizontal and a vertical line there that say fold line, can you see? And then you've got another one which adds on a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So all your seam allowances are worked out for you. So the fold line, this sounds really obvious, but mm. it, it's not that obvious, mm -hmm. I don't think, when you read these instructions. The fold line is when you've folded it like we have here. Yep. And you're making either a semicircle yep. or a full circle. Got you. If you're just making an, a quarter circle, yes. then you use the quarter inch seam allowance line. So you've got to straighten up those two sides first of all. Yes. And then you line those up with the seam line. Yes. That makes perfect sense. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because I found that a little bit confusing when I was reading the instructions. I wasn't quite sure. Creative S Grids put so much in every ruler that it does take a moment or two yeah. to understand all the different things it did. Absolutely. They could make the ruler do one thing and then it might not take you as long yes. to like read the instructions, but we want as much function as we can exactly. get. Exactly, yeah. so it just takes a little bit more time yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to understand it's it. It's worth it. Oh, it. oh, it really is. So because we folded this, then we're going on the fold line. So yep. make sure your fabric is nice and lined up with those two lines. If you want a, this is where you have to do a little bit of maths, because if you want, so obviously this is the radius going from the center of the circle, this is your radius. Mm -hmm. Then if you were doing across the whole circle, that would be, I've got a full circle here, your diameter. Yes. So this is your diameter here, all the way yep. across. So if you wanted a seven inch diameter, yes. you'd have to do a three and a half, three and inch, and a half radius. inch radius. <gasps> like I'm back in school. Yeah. <laughs> I've just gone straight. I went really hot and prickly then for a second. So. <laughs> I was really hoping you were going to get it right. Yeah. Now I'm not going to do a three and a half because it's going to be a little bit small. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. So do the biggest you, you can. You do. Have, shall I do the big? And that's 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 a good point actually. If you're doing this, you know, you only want to cut this fabric as big as you need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want any waste. No. So I'm going to go to ten and a half, and I'm going to open my rotary cutter, put the blade into the sort of teardrop yep. part right at the edge and then hold the ruler but keep your fingers out the way of course yes of course and then you just go around now i notice there you're using a regular 45 mil rotary cutter you don't need to use an extra small blade or no. anything like no awesome so i think it, the instructions actually said about using a smaller blade i use a normal one now that did feel as i was stood there doing it i didn't notice it at home it did feel a bit strange because i was coming towards myself mm -hmm. but because you've got the create because it's a creative grid you've got that teardrop shape at the end yeah, yeah. which stops it so even though you are kind of cutting towards yourself, yeah. it will stop because that groove. groove. You're in a safe groove. But with your rotating cutting mat, you could always turn the mat, couldn't you? Could you could always turn it or and then it so that you'll go, or you could do it this way so that you were going away from mm -hmm, you. That would mm -hmm. probably be better. Love it. So you remove the ruler, you take away, oh, don't you just hate it when your rotary cutter's not, your blade's not quite as sharp. And there you go. So that's my blade, not the creative no, course, grid salt. Yeah. And then you've got your <clears throat> quarter circle. And then when you, un this is like the magic happening all over really again. It really is. And then you the, open They call it this part the reveal. The big reveal. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there you go. Love it. Look, and there's actually circles yeah. on the ruler as well, you, on the got it all going on here, I tell oh. you. Now then, do you want those creases left it in? Or do oh, you want no, to take them out? Oh no, I'd like them pressed out, please. I know how you okay. like to use the rule, um, the iron. So now I noticed on your cushion, mm -hmm. it looks like it's pieced together. It's pieced. So we need to be able to cut the background part that this is going to get pieced into. Well, that is actually the back of my cushion because that's right. the solid circle. Yeah. So if you're doing a full circle like yeah. we have there, yeah. to do this background piece, that would have to be a different size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because you but need to add your seam that? allowance. Yeah, we can cut that. We can cut, cut that. that with our... Now, so we, that, we use ten and a half. Now, let, yep. me do the, let me do the maths. 
You do or, the maths. No, you do the maths. Um, would it be the 11? Would it be 11? So I did 10 and a half. Would it be 11? For the edges of the press square, cut it half an inch larger. You're good. <laughs> You're catching on. I tell you what, You're I've had two at... cups of tea this morning. I, I am on fire. Have you, have you had three Weetabix as well? <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? I did no. have some breakfast this I morning. We... I didn't have Weetabix, no. I always have a little bit of natural Greek yogurt oh, and some nice. fresh fruit, and then just like a dessert spoon of muesli sprinkled. Oh. There's mm. no flies on you, is there? That sounds very <laughs> nice. So could you please press this? Yeah. I've just done a random size there because but as I have, yep. as I have with the cushion, you would do this to the size that you wanted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could do this as big or as small, as long as it fits that circle on as you want. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So into fours, please, yes. Stuart. Um, and does it matter whether you fold it right sides out, wrong sides out? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter make at any all. difference. No. Awesome. Great. No, it doesn't make any difference because as okay. long as you're nicely lined up with your ruler and those two vertical and horizontal edges yep. it's absolutely fine okay great so did we say 11 we're cutting it 11. on 11. yeah so i'm going to put the ruler this way this time so that i can start here and go away from me because it did feel a bit strange coming towards mm. but you get the same result as long as you're safe there we go Thank you very much. So there's the folds. Yeah. My folder folds are across there. Mm -hmm. So this time I've turned. Last time I used the half inch measurements. This time I'm turning the ruler around because I'm using the full increments. Gotcha. And then again, I'm going to line up that fabric to the fold line. Yeah. Fold line, fold line, and then we're going to eleven. Is that right? Yeah. We want this to be. We don't want to go half 10, an inch bigger. Half an inch bigger. So doing the outside, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you read the instructions. <laughs> I hope. So well, we'll on. see, won't we? Let's just try it. Um, suddenly. Yeah. I, let's not read the instructions. Let's just do it anyway. I'm not sure if this is the right way. You know. You've made me question it now, Stuart. Or I've questioned myself. I've made you question so, everything you thought you knew. Yeah, everything I thought I knew when I arrived. It's like now my special talent. Suddenly, I don't know if we've gone the wrong way. Where, where's the circle gone? I think we might have gone the wrong way, you know. We have, look. We've gone the wrong way. You've read the instructions. It's the other way. OK, give me another piece of fabric. Dun, do, da. <clears throat> Which one have we got? Have we got a... Yeah, let's use this one. Oh yeah, lovely. This is nice. So we go so half how an inch not smaller. To do it. We go half an inch smaller because <coughs> we need the seam okay. allowance, don't we? Yes. I'm not even going to cut that. That's a fat I'll just quarter. Fold it. Yeah, yeah. That's a fat quarter. You see, when I'm when I'm at home prepping these shows, I'm all organised, know what I'm doing. Then I come here, and it just all goes out the window. Yeah. It's Stuart's fault. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take it on the chin. I've been blamed for worse. I'm sure. I mean, this is the thing though, Stuart, seriously, with fabric. Yeah. I know I know it's pricey. I don't mean to say you can afford to waste it because I god I use every last inch. Yeah, yeah. But it's only fabric, isn't it? It's do you know what I mean? It's it, when we get quite stressed, you know those days where you're having a bit of a bad day with the sewing machine yeah, yeah. and you want to throw it out the window. I sometimes have to remind myself, you think, it's only fabric, yeah. but I, it is expensive and when it's beautiful like this, you don't want to... Well, if you buy the Mega Bundle, Debbie, it's only, it's less than £6.50, I think, a half metre, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, which is amazing so, you value. Know. It's amazing value. Yeah. Right, so which way are we going then? We did we're ten, going so we're going to smaller. ten. We're going to ten. We are. <laughs> right, fold to here and it's here. It's a Debbie, Debbie and Stuart show, isn't it? Now, you read the instructions you, and you said it's half an inch bigger. I'm just praying that... <laughs> so this is ten. So I've cut this circle on ten. So imagine that was a nice big cushion. Yeah. And then that is <laughs> that is going to fit. Thank we've goodness. got a seam allowance. We did, we've now got a seam allowance. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I bet now you want 
quarter marks, don't you, for lining it well, up? Well, actually, I've got them there, yeah. and I can still see the previous ones. Okay. So I'm happy to go with that. Great, perfect. Now, this is where you it looks pins? cute, counterintuitive, because what we've got to do now is sew this to this. Yeah. So you've got to do what, what feels completely different and wrong. I'm going to, this is how, I'm trying to think now which way I did this. I would go with the quarter marks. There's no easy way to do this without it not looking elegant, is there? I've got a couple of pins, but I will Yeah, well, the th I always think the trick with, with um, curved piecing is lots and lots of pins, take time. Lots and lots of pins. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up those quarter marks on the circle and I'm lining up the quarter marks on the outer circle mm -hmm. and I'm going to pin them. So you're pinning it right sides together as you would normally. It just looks very strange at this point. Quart that's why these quarter um, circle lines really help the mm. creases mm. because they're giving you a guide. Yeah. If you just went for it, the fabric is quite unstable at this stage because you've cut a circle yes so both of those angles are on the bias yeah yeah, yeah absolutely. so it's quite unstable so that's why it's really important to measure those quarter inch marks um, quarter circle marks and keep agreed. it nice agreed yes and then it kind of at this point goes together itself would mm -hmm. you say it kind of yes. marries itself up so you're marrying up the inner circle and the outer one. Yes, and just have faith they will fit together. Yep, without Lots stretching. Lots of pins. Without stretching either of them. Right. Okay, do you want me to do the whole circle? Yes, Have we got please. time? Oh yeah. 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 Fabulous. So that's the first quarter done. And once you're at this point, it does, it just fits together nicely, as Stuart says. Lots and lots of pins, mm. but it's very, very stretchy at this point. Mm. So you've got to be careful not to stretch one piece. And right, you're just wanting the fabric to stay as stable as possible in its in its shape. Do you use lots of circles, Stuart, in your designs? Well, I've done a few quilts that use half circles, full circles, and quarter circles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in a few of my mm. few of my books. <coughs> and I'm just thinking this circle savvy ruler would have been brilliant. I've got one pattern called um, I think it might just be called half circles. <laughs> and, I like um, it. I like a, a nice straight. It does what it says on the tin. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be like that for and me. And all you do there is you. They're actually appliqued circles, but of course, there's no reason why you couldn't put bondo web on the back of your fabric, no. and then fold it. Leave the paper backing on, of course. Um, then fold it, and then cut out, and then you've got fusible circles. But yeah, you just um, fuse a big circle onto a big square. Applique around the outside, you could piece it, <coughs> and then you rotary cut it in half. So you end up with two rectangles oh. with half circles yeah. um, pieced in. And then you just stagger them, kind of, so it goes one up and then one down, one up, one down. It creates almost like a sort of, almost like a sort of snake like yes. look. Yeah. But I did it in lovely um, Tilda florals oh, nice. on a white background been such a popular design I've seen so many versions of mm. it which is always lovely That's and nice. it's actually a really easy quilt and it's a bit dynamic and it's a bit different yeah which is what we were saying earlier isn't it it's having yeah. that bit of a different design now I always have this quandary Debbie yeah. when I'm sewing a circle yeah I know what do you're you gonna have say concave or convex yes do you which way round do you have it yeah so I would my I've I've pinned that on the converse, isn't it? A convex edge. Check me out. But I'm actually going to sew it with that edge, the con, right. because with this outer edge yeah. showing, because yeah. I think that makes sense when you're pushing it around the machine. Understood, understood. So my pins are all gonna be upside down, but that yeah. doesn't matter, it's yeah. absolutely You'll fine. You'll take them out as you get there anyway. Exactly. So I'm going to quarter go an inch seam. quarter of an inch seam because that's of course what you've got so that is on stitch. the ruler. Can you remember the stitch? Oh, Which hang stitch? on, let me just put that down. Uh, was it 46? Yes, it was. Oh, 
46. See the Brother FS250 is so easy to get your head around. You can literally get it out of the box and start sewing. Yeah. Love it. It's a lovely machine. It's very solid. And then I'm just sewing. Now the trick I think with the circle, Stuart, would you agree? Um, yes. Is just to take your time. Oh, no. Yeah, I would. Absolutely. Just take your time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're not, obviously there's no straight edges and you're also making sure you're lining up both of those circles together. Right. This is where the pins are you know worth the weight in Essential, gold aren't they? and yeah. i don't like to say i'm not a big pinner normally but you've got to i think with a circle and just take absolutely. your time absolutely there's so much fun and you just ease in the fabric round as you go so you're not rushing you're just taking your time well the thing is as well debbie that's the block Yes. You know, and I mean, when I think about my 21 half square triangle Lady of the Lake nine inch block, that's taking me about an hour and a half mm. to make each one. Yeah. So if I take 15 minutes sewing slowly and pinning yep. slowly, that is still a lot less time. Yep. So, you know, horses for courses. The thing is with simple blocks, you want to make sure that they are really beautifully sewn, don't mm, you? Yeah. It's like creating a really beautiful omelette, you know, you, you not many ingredients, so you've got to cook them really nicely. Yeah. I bring that up, Debbie, because I worked in a restaurant when I was 15 mm -hmm. until I was about 18, cooking and waiting on. And yeah. I remember once a man came in and he asked for an omelette and he wanted nothing in it. He said he didn't want any salt and pepper, no flavorings, no herbs, no mushrooms, nothing, just egg, basically. And so I made this. <laughs> And then when he'd eaten it, he sent a message back for the chef that it was the most flavourless thing he had ever eaten. Oh my gosh, well, what did he want? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I know what you mean. You've got to make sure you've cooked those eggs right when that's all really that's in it. You have. And basically, you know, I was too busy thinking about my O-levels to really care too much about his omelette. But if you're watching, I do apologise. I hope life's got better since then. I wonder... <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if he'd recognise you, Stuart, and say to himself, "That's that guy who made me that." I should have just appreciated the omelette that he made for me. <laughs> I'm exactly. always grateful. If somebody cooks for me, I'm just grateful. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be so. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be bothered if it was seasoned or not. <coughs> No, no. I like fancy, fancy things, but I love simple mm. things. Oh, cottage pie. <gasps> yeah. Yummy. You know, don't need anything complicated to make me happy. Ham, egg and chips. Ham, egg and chips. Double egg and chips. Oh, now you've just been... You're going mad now, aren't you? No. Double egg. How many That's ingredients? A bit, That's a bit um, mm -hmm. flash, isn't it? What's double that? E double egg. Double egg? Mm. Is it flash? Yeah, I think so, yeah. We've got chickens, you see, so every day is a constant oh. battle to try and incorporate eggs into something. <laughs> so you'd have double just to get rid of them? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I we love do eggs. give a lot to our friends, though. <coughs> love eggs. Oh, such good eggs, must too. Must be nice. Happy hens. Yeah. Happy hens, happy eggs. Happy eggs. That must be really nice to have them on uh, constant supply. Oh, yeah, it really I'd is. I love that. Good girls, mine. Oh, how, really do you, how, many girls. Did you get, how many chickens have you got, then? At the moment, I think we've only got about nine or ten, something oh, like okay. that. And how many eggs do you get every day? Oh, seven. Do you? Probably seven a day. Gosh. So, so it's um, omelettes, yeah. quiche. Scrambled egg for breakfast, Charlie. <laughs> Doesn't have quite the same appeal as it did at the start. No, well, no it's like, we, <laughs> can we have something else other than eggs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, you, can't beat, you can't beat an egg. See what I did there? Yeah. Do you remember the old campaign, go to work on an on egg? On an egg. Do you remember that at home? <laughs> right. I'm nearly back round to the um, hey. beginning there. I'm just amusing myself at the ironing board. <laughs> Here Don't we go. Ask. Here we go. There we are. So that just needs a nice press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that would press out all awesome. those kind of bits of folds that look like they're not going to press out but they would so I would press on the reverse mm -hmm. I have pleated it a little bit there Stuart forgive me I would press in 
Mm -hmm. I would press that fold mm -hmm. towards the center. It just feels like it naturally wants to go in yes. easier. And then you just press that flat and it will get rid of all those little wrinkles Gorgeous. around the edge. So that's if you want to put a full circle into a background piece. Mm -hmm. Shall I show you now how that's different from just a quarter, quarter circle, which is what yeah. I did here. Because <coughs> that's it's slightly where you different. use a different um, line on the ruler, am I right? Yes, that's quite Gorgeous. different. Yeah. yeah. So it's same technique, but slightly different in terms of measurements. So I'm going to cut, so I'm going to demo exactly what I did for the cushion here behind me. So I'm going to cut a nine and a half inch square from this lovely paisley fabric. Mm -hmm. So nine and a half inch. Oh, are you going to press, are you pressing out my, how they're looking Stuart? Are they looking yeah, all right? Yeah. The, uh, the, the um, seams on the circle. Yeah, I don't know if I'm pressing it the right way, but I'm pressing it away from the circle. Yeah, is that the opposite okay. of what you asked for? It's, it is, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, we can work. You're welcome. <laughs> you, are, you are the best eye now. <laughs> Do you know I actually really like ironing? I find I it very tell. relaxing. It's very therapeutic actually, isn't it? The thing is, I as many of you have commented on <laughs> on Facebook and Instagram I'm always busy doing something the most common comment I get on my posts is do you ever just sit down yeah are you one of those who <laughs> like to keep busy yeah, and, yeah, yeah yeah I love it I love it yeah. and um, but if I'm ironing I am actually standing still which is quite unusual for me so it's quite nice Right, so this time I've got, I've cut a nine and a half inch square of fabric. This is going to be this outer section here, not this bit. Okay. And I'm going to put the ruler, I'm going to use these half inch increments. And this time, this is where it's very different, I'm using the seam allowance line. Understood. Because I want to have that seam allowance so that I can then piece the, all of these quarters together. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut on the 11 and a half inch line. Yeah. Okay. So is this the background you're cutting This now? is the background. Understood. Yeah, this I'm piece. Just, I'm bringing this over because I'm just wondering, this was the circle that we cut out of the background, whether we might use this for the centre circle. Yes, we could. I mean, we might have to trim it down a bit. Might but, have to, mm -hmm. yeah. I let me, um, yeah, that's a good idea. So that is the outer piece of this quarter circle <coughs> yeah okay so if you yep. could press that Will and then do. could i please have the do you want that in quarters or no so i suppose you do do you no that well this one mm. no they're not in quarters the only thing with this Stuart, is i've calculated the measurements oh sorry on a square uh, of course so yeah. can i stick to yeah, a square course, would yeah. that be awfully yeah, yeah. um assertive of me do it do no, it you're right that wouldn't be a big enough circle anyway for a quarter no no so i'm going to cut this time i'm going to cut a seven inch square for the inner mm -hmm. and the reason i'm cutting the squares bigger and smaller is obviously just to avoid a lot of waste yeah. because you want to reduce the waste don't you because we love our precious fabrics we really do <coughs> because they are precious aren't they mm -hmm. so seven inches i'm going on this square I could have done with a new blade in my rotary cutter today, couldn't I? Should yeah. Have, should have treated myself to one. I only put one in the other day because I've been making all these samples. Um, <coughs> they don't uh, last that long. So that's a seven inch square. So this is going to be for this circle, the pie part, mm -hmm. if you like. And this time I'm going to make this Did you mention bigger pie? pie. I see this is the pie bit. Piece of pie. Piece of pie. I like the fact that I'm getting a quarter. Yeah. It's good going. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you're getting a quarter of the pie now. So I'm Gorgeous. now going to measure the... Oh, oh hello. Ooh, that's clever. But I couldn't have done that. <laughs> Sliding through. Um, <laughs> I did it again. You just about to say, I bet I couldn't do that I again. And I did it and twice. And then you did. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Should go for a world record here. 
Right, so I'm going on the, the quarter seam allowance yeah. line again. Yeah. And this time I'm measuring tw 12 and a half. So I'm going, I've written these measurements down so I know that they're right, 12 yeah. and a half. Let's go with that. Yeah. And do then, you like pie? I do like pie. It's not something I have very often though, do you? No, no, I don't, don't at the moment. But I did make a pie last week. Chicken, bacon, mushroom. Oh, nice. Oh, what was yummy? Nice. That's why I've only got nine chickens left. No, I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking. I bought oh, it from the supermarket. Gosh. No, this is the thing. I, buy, I still buy my chicken from the supermarket. I hope you do. They're yeah, pets, yeah. aren't they? No, of course they are. Of course they are. What I'm into at the minute, shall I tell you? Go on. Um, we've got a plum tree oh. that is so giving. Yeah. Crum plum crumbles. Gorgeous. <gasps> they are really nice. Yeah, made plum jam last week. Did you? Yeah. You did. Plum jam. Plum jam. <laughs> I'm nice. just going to mark you a little crease. Thank you. There. There. And so one in the centre of this as well, yeah? Absolutely. You've done this before, haven't you? I certainly have. And then... So that looks very strange. Looks too big. It looks far too big because it's incorporating your seam allowance. Mm -hmm. So because you've marked those seams, they're uh, the folds for me. So that's half of that circle. And this is half of this one. Mm -hmm. Again, looks a bit counterintuitive. We're going to put those right sides together. Mm. But they look as if they're not going to match, don't they, completely. And then Trust the process. this one, we're going to line up those straight edges. Mm -hmm. So we're really twisting that round so that that meets that straight edge pin and then do the same this side straight edges meet and then as you said before lots of pins pin 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 <coughs> it's funny isn't it because i'm not a pinner at all but when it comes to doing circles it's just automatic yeah to pin quite a lot isn't it well it is although i follow somebody on instagram and um she posts a video every day of her sewing a block. Does she really? And she doesn't pin anything. She doesn't mark half square triangles for sewing on, although she's just like, you know, flippy, whatever. She doesn't pin anything ever. And she doesn't press anything either as she's going along. All the things we say not, you know, to. Yeah. And, but and then her it. blocks are absolutely beautiful. Wow. Um, Is that because she's, yeah, that's amazing. That's obviously what works for her yeah. this is a thing everybody works in a different way don't they yeah. slightly different way do what's right for you so again i'm using i'm so well this time i say again i'm doing this the opposite i'm going to sew with the circle side mm -hmm. up so again just do what is natural yes for you because we're all as you've just explained there with the lady you follow everyone just does things slightly differently yeah. there's no right and wrong really is there we're all unique and beautiful oh aren't we yeah. embrace it yeah and again, quarter of an inch seam. Oh. Well, the, Debbie, Debbie's messaged in. I think this. I think this is going back to. Is this about how to use the eggs? What about a lovely buck rarebit? Oh. I don't think I know what a buck rarebit is. I've had Welsh rarebit mm. like that. That's cheese, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, wasn't he in Westerns, but rabbit. Ooh, I'm going to look that up. That sounds delicious. It's a rabbit. And if it's delicious, I'm there for it. Oh, cheese on toast with an egg. What, like a fried egg on top or something? Oh, or a poached egg. I tell you what I do love, I love smashed avocado on toasted sourdough with poached egg mm -hmm. and little chilli flakes. I'm not like keen on avocado, do you? Aren't yeah. you? So, no, I could live like on them. Really? Yeah. I had my first avocado when I was seven years old. It was 1978 and we went to the Swan Hotel for Christmas dinner on Christmas Day. Oh, oh my goodness, we thought we were like the poshest people ever. We got a visit from Santa Claus. Aww. I got a set of felt tip pens. And I had ordered 
avocado with prawn and Mary Rose oh. for a starter. And it came out and it was like carving a bar of soap. It was so <laughs> hard and underripe. But of course, nobody at the table or in the restaurant knew what an avocado was supposed no. to be like. That was very advanced, Stuart, wasn't it, for a seven-year-old? I wonder I've got any teeth left. This is why you're so cultured now. <laughs> So, Fabulous! So there's your, there's your quarter Schmooze, circle. Schmooze, Miss Harris. Thank Schmose. you. You're happy with that. Let me give that a little press. Give it a little press for me. For Thank you. you very much. Do you are you a clipper or a not clipper? Uh, Seam well, allowance? Would you ever clip or not? No, I wouldn't. No. Not on that. No. Would you? No. No, not Don't at think all. I would, no. really. well, I'd press it. And oh, if it lay it. flat, oh, I press it. But if it lay flat when I pressed it, then I'd consider it a job done, and I'd walk away before yeah. I messed it up. Yeah, and if it wasn't laying flat, then I'd just clip into it. Yeah, absolutely. Check that out. Look at out. that. Now, when, just when we thought, oh, that's not going to work, that's a big difference in the cut. Shazam! Cuts. There it is, and then your backs is just nice and easy. These blooming <coughs> threads look. Oh, I'll look, cut, a long thread. I'll Debbie Harris, off. where have you been? I'll cut them off before <laughs> Stuart tells me off. So that's a quarter and that's it. So you can do, and then a half, if you wanted to do a half circle, a semicircle, that would be the same as the this one. Yes. You, know, to, you just fold the fabric in half. Yeah, of course. Rather than into quarters. So then would you line it up with the fold on one side and the seam allowance on the other. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be one on the other, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I would always, Fab. always with this ruler double check the, um, you know, Watch like, the you know, as Stuart and I did, um, double check whether you're going half a size bigger, half a size smaller. Um, Stuart and so I. So that Stuart and I. I'm going to watch that tape back. <laughs> And um, and then you'll know. I'll take the blame, Stuart. It's, I'll, I'll take the blame. I'm the demonstrator. It's you fine. You know, she who does the cutting, you know, takes, takes the blame. Takes the blame. It's accountable. Mm. But yeah, it, it, if you follow the, the instructions, it's very, very easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just making you sure really that you're You said rules then, and I don't, think, oh. I don't believe you've ever followed a rule in your life. <laughs> Bit of a rebel. <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying, Stuart? I'm very careful. What we all know to be true, Debbie. You're a rule breaker. <laughs> Aren't you? Are you a rule breaker or a rule follower? Bit of both, I right, think. Right, yeah. Yeah, a bit of both. Yeah. I mean, I'm not suggesting that you go and rob a bank. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. no I'm very law-abiding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, I've been known to, to be a bit of a rebel, I suppose. Yeah. Have you ever snuck a little tin of gin and tonic into the theatre? I don't drink gin and tonic. <laughs> oh, okay. But I might have put a oh. can of I might have put a can of coke in. Yeah, I've done that kind of thing. My friend always wraps hers up in a pair of socks because if her bag gets checked, no one wants to start like pulling out someone's pair of socks. That's a good idea. Yeah. I you get all the top tips here on Sewing Street. We do our best. <laughs> How to? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure we should be given this sort of advice. <laughs> If I owned a theatre, I might not say it. Anyway, shall I just show you the lovely fabrics to finish off? A little fabric roundup. We've been using, Debbie's been using the gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous Promenade collection from Moda. It is glorious. It is soft and gentle. There are six of these bundles left. That's it. And when they're gone, they're gone. You get those gorgeous, lovely peachy tones and soft apricots, really gentle greens there with the paisley, beautiful light florals, that big blousy floral, absolutely gorgeous. So, so pretty, love that print. You get 10 half meters, but you only pay for four and a half. Half a metre is free, 67.41. If you want any of those individually, have a look on the website and um, you can get those by the half metre. Now then, we're going to go to a short break. When we come back, Debbie, you're sticking around, but you're getting out your crochet hooks. I'm getting out the hooks. Hey, hey. Yeah. we've got some gorgeous yarns and projects in the next hour, so stick with us as we head on over to Yarn Lane.
Hello, my name is Mark Francis and I'm a guest designer right here on Sewing Street. Uh, you may have seen me before. I don't know whether anybody has maybe tuned into the Great British Sewing Bee, but I was there for Series 6 reaching the quarterfinals. I'm now here on Sewing Street on your screens bringing you my very favourite sewing patterns for men, women and children. Uh, for dressmaking and tailoring. Uh, so you can fill your stash and your collection with my very favourite fabrics and sewing patterns, including my very own range uh, right here, exclusive to Sewing Street. Something you may not know about me, now let's have a think. A lot of this has been covered on the sewing bee, but uh, I am a Blue Peter badge winner. I know, I know. I haven't worn it in a while. Slightly too old to get into Warwick Castle these days wearing it, but you never, I don't know, do I pass for 16? I don't know, possibly not anymore. Um, and I'm also, hence the piano, uh, a pianist I've been playing since the age of seven, when my school teacher at the time taught me a little under duress from my mother because he thought I would be terrible. Turned out I wasn't, but there we go. Such is life, you never know until you give it a go. <gasps> Have I just invented a new catchphrase? I don't know. You never know until you give it a go. Caption across the screen, please. Thank you very much. So do join me popping up on your screens on here on Sewing Street to bring you my very favourite sewing patterns uh, and fabrics from across the range, including my very own uh, range of sewing patterns from So Mark Francis, um, including this very Turlo shirt. Um, more to come on a regular basis, so do keep tuned for that. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Sewing Streets have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. 
You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals, and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hello there, welcome to Yarn Lane. I'm Stuart Hillard, it's wonderful to have your company. This hour is all about crochet. Um, I just got a, a little disappointing moment. <laughs> Becky, who's our multi-skilled operator, just was just setting everything out on the table and I saw her put this down and I came straight over and I was like, who's bought me chocolates? Those look lovely, thinking they were those, you know, the matchstick chocolates. Have a look. I mean, they're better than chocolates, really. But look, it's Knit Pro Symphony Rose crochet hooks. But you can see what I what I thought, can't you? It's not just me being greedy and cho chocolate obsessed. So if I had a slightly sad face at the beginning, that's why. Anyway, look at all this lovely rainbowy gorgeousness in front of me. Um, you know I love a rainbow and this is glorious, glorious colour. We've got beautiful pinks and plums and reds, oranges, yellows and greens, blues, greys, bit of cream. There's even a lovely little lilac-y just gorgeous. Now our focus for this hour is on two beautiful granny square projects. The first one and what relates to this gorgeous rainbow bundle of yarn is Debbie Harris's crochet rainbow blanket. Check this out. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And the blanket. Oh, stop it. You're welcome. Beautiful. <laughs> It's not wedge shaped by the way, it's just the way it's been hung. <laughs> Looks like it goes, there you go. How beautiful is that? I love the combination of rainbow with the grey in between, isn't it beautiful? And I love all those like rows around the outside edge. Gorgeous. <clears throat> so our first bundle here, or in fact our first thing is the pattern for the crochet rainbow blanket. So $9.99 from Debbie Harris Designs. What you're getting there is full instructions. If you've never done crochet before, great beginner project. If you have, brilliant, you'll be able to jump straight in. Uh, you've got your written instructions plus charted instructions. You've even got this gorgeous layout diagram. How beautiful is that? I love it. I love it. That is your beautiful crochet rainbow blanket. Now, it works really beautifully with this bundle of yarns, and this is really stonking value. Um, it's all DK, okay? Um, all the yarn is DK, and you've got an absolutely gorgeous mix. You've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, I should have just read the monitor. You've got 16 balls of yarn. And you've got a mixture of Starcraft Special DK, and you've also got some You and Me 
double knitting yarn in there as well also from Stylecraft an absolutely beautiful mix of colours mostly solids but then you've got a dark grey mull you've got this look at this beautiful one which is kind of like a melange of sort of um, Cabernet and Merlot and Burgundy beautiful and then check these out you've got this kind of lilac -y blue and then these soft pinks in this gorgeous variegated yarn so some a really lovely mixture of solids and variegated yarns there um, just going to create a gorgeous gorgeous blanket so in total you've got 16 100 gram balls that is a lot of yarn yeah. for 37.99 Debbie, in terms of how much yarn we need for the blanket, is this going to make that whole blanket? It does you? make that whole blanket. Fantastic. Yeah. Do we need anything extra? Not at all. Just a hook. Just a hook. And what do you recommend? I use a four or a four point five. Okay. So it doesn't matter really. Mm -hmm. Depends which one is your preference. Okay. And when you're doing crochet, do you need to start with a tension? square or ideally if you are if i was making a cardigan mm -hmm. or an item of clothing to wear mm. i would always do a tension square like with knitting mm -hmm. but if i'm doing something like a blanket or a crochet cushion then i don't no absolutely i have to say i don't fab no. so <clears throat> there's no bundle that includes the yarn and the pattern together so if you want to get the pattern itself you can buy that individually for 9.99 if you want to get this gorgeous bundle of rainbow yarns it's 37.99 phenomenal value for one kilogram 1.6 kilograms of beautiful gorgeous soft squishy uh, yarn from Stylecraft I work with Starcraft and they just make some beautiful yarns. And actually Starcraft Special DK is the nation's favourite mm. uh, double knit yarn. Yeah, uh, I is. think it's lovely. Beautiful. It's so, so lovely yeah. to work with. Well, you get such great Washes results as well. Washes well, doesn't it? Yeah, you washes just... really, really well. Yeah. Um, just remember if you're a if you're a blocker if you like blocking your knitting or crochet with the special dk <clears throat> all you need to do is kind of dampen down and then just pin out your granny squares mm. don't iron them don't apply any heat um, otherwise it can affect the kind of bounciness of the yarn and kind of mm. kill it right okay mm? call it yeah. killing the oh, killing the acrylic yeah. yeah i'd normally just pin mine if i'm blocking i would just pin them out as you said yeah then i'll spray them spritz them yeah yeah just spritz them lightly with a bit of warm water yeah and then they come out but, but these aren't blocked so <clears> i haven't <throat> blocked these so they already come out they look nice absolutely gorgeous i love it with that variegated yarn yeah i love this pink love this pink well should we launch straight in shall we so I'm, I can start, I've got sort of half um, a block here, mm -hmm. or do you want me to start from the beginning perhaps of a block? We'll for start those from the beginning on one, just for those absolute beginners. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to use this, this variegated pink, which is mm. just delicious, isn't really it? Really cute. So I'm going to start with my slip knot. So just start by taking the yarn around your finger, pulling that yarn through, that loop, but not all the way. So it just creates a nice slip knot that you can change the size of quite easily. When I'm running classes for crochet, sometimes people really struggle just coordinating fingers mm. and crochet hooks and yarn. There's a lot to do, isn't there, when you're first learning to crochet, it's Learning I think. the hand movements. It's yeah. like playing a musical instrument, isn't it? If you've ever tried learning the guitar, yeah. the contorted fingers at first yeah. to try and make the notes, you think, how does anyone ever play this and make it look or sound anything less than painful? Yeah. But you get there with crochet, don't you? Yeah, and it really is, like you say, it's the, the, the relationship between your hands, the hook and the yarn they're all working together, aren't they? Mm. They're not working individually at all. So you've got your slip stitch, which is your first foundation stitch on your hook. I'm obviously right-handed, so I'm showing you this way. And then you take your yarn over. We're gonna chain stitch six stitches. So just a stitch, chain stitch, yarn over, pull that through the hook, and that's your first chain. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do six of those, two, 
three, or you could do it this way. So now I'm using the hook, four, five, six. So the hook does most of the work. Mm. So when I slow it down, I sort of do it one way. Yeah. And then suddenly you're into the rhythm. Yeah, yeah. So to make the ring, I then just pull, use the hook to take that yarn end through that chain, that first foundation, uh, the new stitch at the end, and then just pull it tight. And then I always just put a knot in that. Oh, so it's okay. secure. Okay, it's different. Yeah. Hmm? different to how you would do it well i've seen all sorts of different oh, well, methods there's lots for joining there? a ring magic yeah. loop there's yeah. all sorts isn't there yeah. that's cool so that's how i have always done it and then what i do with my left hand i will keep that tail end tucked behind that ring on the left hand side mm. because then i can crochet over it so that mm. gets buried and secured inside the, the work so then you take your hook through the center of the ring and you're going to do and that's your foundation loop just by bringing that through and then I'm going to chain three and that it is a chain three but it's a mock treble crochet yeah. so it's just to get your first post to give you the height on this first round and then we're going to do a treble crochet so yarn over take the hook with that yarn through the center of the ring hook from the back the yarn from the back pull it through so then you've got three stitches on your crochet hook and they're all coming from different places. So it looks a little bit untidy at this stage, but it's how it wants to be. Mm -hmm. Take your yarn over and pull it through two stitches, yarn over again and pull it through the remaining two. And that is a treble crochet stitch. And then we do another one. Yarn over through the center, pull the yarn from the back, yarn over, through two stitches, yarn over through those remaining two. Wow. And that's a set of what is essentially three treble crochets. Okay? So that's your first cluster. That's my first cluster. So Love that it. was one of these little, I call them petals. Petal, like a little I like petal. That. Of nice the little flower. shout out for Morag Mo. Loving the colours. Gorgeous. Who doesn't love a rainbow, eh? I got alpaca yarn and vegan yarn at Bannockburn Yarn Festival on Sunday. I'm very beginner with crochet. Mo, keep watching because Deb is going to do a real like in-depth basic how to granny square mm -hmm. because it's, a, it's the foundation, isn't it? It's the starting point for so many crochet it projects. It is. I think once you can master a granny square, mm -hmm. you can pretty much follow any pattern and make anything then because they're all variations of those stitches, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, often. So, Yarn over and pull through two, uh, pull through. We're going to do, that's two chain stitches. So for this first, where the corners are, it's where it gets a little bit confusing because what we're doing here is building the foundation for that corner. <clears throat> yeah. So on each of the corners from round two, there's two clusters or two petals of three treble that crochets. That go in the same space. That go in the same <clears throat> chain space. Right. So that's why there's always two chain spaces on that corner one. Just to give you a bit more room. That's right. Okay. So then another treble crochet. So pull through two and pull through two. I love this variegated yarn when it starts to change mm. colour. Another treble crochet, yarn over, pull through and pull through two. So what you're doing here is creating that foundation of your granny square which is then what everything else is built on. Three, so you're doing three, oh, they're always in threes mm -hmm. and we're doing four clusters. So we're essentially doing 12 trebles. We're doing that first mock treble of yep. three chain and Oops, then 11 chain. treble crochets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I've come back round to the beginning. And then to finish that circle off, that round, I'm then going to take the hook through the very top of both of those stitches of that first chain three. Mm -hmm. Take the yarn, hook from the back and pull it through, and then pull it through that stitch. And there you are with your first flower. That's your first round. Cute. Then what happens at this point is your crochet hook is in the wrong point because we then want to move across to this chain space here. So I'm just going to slip stitch across the top of these trebles here. So take the yarn, the, the hook, through the top of those two stitches on the top of that treble on the first round, hook from the back, pull it through and through. 
and then again go through the top of that treble and then through that chain space and all you've done there is just do three chain, chain slip stitches to take you into that corner. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's a little technique that's worth knowing. If you ever sort of find yourself like in the wrong spot yep. to move across to where you want to be. Just slip stitch across like the top. That. Yeah. So we're now in the right position to start our next chain of three, which makes our first post a mock treble to then do the second round. And then once we've mastered this, mm -hmm. it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So three chain. One. Well, that's what's so good about a project like this. It really helps to establish the basic skills. Yep. You don't have to sit slavishly over a pattern. You no. use it to begin with, and then once you're comfortable, you can just sit and relax. Exactly. And... Oh, yeah. there's nothing nicer than sat in the evening, TV on, or you can chat. Yeah. Um, and you can still be crocheting comfortably. Exactly. Uh, without really watching and concentrating too much but just enough to keep your brain occupied and yeah. satisfied it's like the stocking stitch of crochet yes. isn't it yeah now i just need to let you know at home the rainbow bundle that i started off the show showing you there's only six of them left um, there's actually double that number in baskets so maybe can i just show you all the beautiful colors that you get in that bundle because i think sometimes it's good to see them kind of live as well so just to show you i'll go through them quite quickly but you've got that beautiful mottled pink you've got the raspberry you've got this mixture of beautiful it's called peony you've got claret lipstick spice mustard uh apple oh apple green love it we used to have a beetle that was apple green oh. oh it was gorgeous uh we've got meadow cloud blue yummy these shades aren't they you've got uh, this is called cornish blue that is very classy really loving that then you've got this mixture which is called grace which is a mixture of kind of lilacs and blues and soft aquas really nice then you've got this dark gray which is just called gray thanks for that stylecraft gray hint of silver that's better get two of those two balls of that and then you also get cream so an absolutely gorgeous mixture of 16 different colors now there are three bundles left there are nine of them in baskets so we've now gone from twice as many in baskets to three times as many in baskets than we have please check out those last three bundles will not last the hour okay where are we at so i've moved on to my third and final round in this colorway so each of the granny squares that are in the center that form the center of the blanket you do three rounds in one colorway mm -hmm. then you do one round in the contrasting color of that shade and then you do on all of them one round of that silver gray um, okay so that lighter gray yeah so that gives it a really nice it just makes them all uniform so they're all very different but that silver grey border on them all just brings them, ties them all in together. Yeah, it's a lovely sort of modern neutral to show off, show off lovely bright colours, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, black can always be a nice um, colour as well. It's yes. difficult to, to knit with the darker or crochet with the darker colours, um, but that could be a nice dark, um, mm -hmm. plain colour as well to mm. really show off the right, the bright brain, rainbow can't speak uh, rainbow colors now I wonder if I can just show can I show these gorgeous oh oh these are rather special this set of crochet hooks oh oh if you want to treat yourself I tell you it's better than a bo box of chocolates really beautiful let me just show you so here's the box so I'm thinking a really special gift to yourself you got this beautiful box and then 
Look at those. Do you see the little diamante in the bottom of each? Gorgeous, aren't they? Really, really beautiful. What a Christmas present, eh? Now, let me just tell you, size-wise, what you've got in there <coughs> is, these are metric sizes, so in millimetres, 3.5, <coughs> boy, I'm, so, I'm <coughs> sorry, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 7, 8. US sizes, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10.75 and 11. They are the birchwood, laminated birchwood. You feel amazing in your hand to crochet with. They are really beautiful. I almost always use Knit Pro knitting needles. I absolutely love them. Um, they just feel gorgeous. So beautiful. That's the largest size, that's the eight mil. Mm. Oh, well, I honestly think, you know, especially for a lot of us who've been doing a particular hobby for a long time, um, you get to that stage where you sort of say, I'm only going to use and make really lovely things now. I'm going to have beautiful tools and I'm going to have lovely things. You know what I mean? Mm. You, sort of, you become quite discerning, don't mm. you? Absolutely. Um, and I've definitely done that over the year. And I suppose as well as you as you can afford them maybe because you've mm. got the other things yeah. or you're renewing something. These are just such beautiful, beautiful quality. Um, it does become a part of you. Oh, I, I think it's really nice to have the, the right tools that suit you. Mm. Um, it's it adds to your craft doesn't yes, it yes it does to your it hobby. really does really it does. really does yeah yeah you are on fire go derby so. go derby so you're using a solid pink now you're using raspberry it's a lovely color this, isn't, it isn't it gorgeous it? yeah so what i've done i'll stop this one when i just do that three there um, each of the rows are made up of sort of alternating um, the colours. Yeah. So obviously we've got the rose, um, what did you say, raspberry, raspberry and yeah. this mottled pink. Mm -hmm. So I've got the mottled pink with a raspberry border and a grey border. And then the next one is the opposite of that. You've got the raspberry, then the mottled pink around the edge, then a grey border. Mm -hmm. And then they alternate the whole row alternate six times so you have six blocks mm -hmm. alternating for each color so really love seven that combination colors, and that's how they alternate <clears throat> um between it's really easy to change color you will just start the next round so you tie off the yarn on the previous round yep. and then you just do a new slip stitch into one of the chain spaces mm -hmm. on the last round and then you just start again with three chain as a post and then you just continue with your trebles. Got you. So it's really easy to change colour. I'll show you in a second. When I get to the end of this round, if you like, I can do another round with a different colour, awesome. with a grey, yeah, yeah, to show you good. how easy it is. Yeah. So it's really easy to tie off one colour and then start your next one. Love that. Now, sad news, one bundle left. Just one bundle left, I'm afraid. So if you're quick, it can be yours, but you will need to check out your basket right away. It's 37.99, but for that you're getting 16 different beautiful Stylecraft yarns. You get 14 special DK, and then you get two balls of that really special variegated yarn that's called You and Me. Uh, it's really lovely. It's so buttery soft. Um, it's actually a blend. The, the rest of them are all um, premium acrylic, but this one is 80% premium acrylic and then 20% cashmere effect polyamide. So you get this really soft feel, don't it's you? It's lovely. To this yarn Absolutely is Absolutely lovely. Just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and a lovely soft palette. I love the way the colour changes without you having to do anything. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just trying to unpick that because I just carried on and finished the round ah. um, without thinking. You just get into an autopilot. Yeah, you really do. So what I did was I got to the end of that round here and then with the chain, the stitch that I had on my needle, 
I then went through the top of the three chain from that first stitch, took the yarn from the ball, pulled it through like this, and then just tighten that off. So that is to secure that round. And then to weave that one in at the end, I then just turn the work over, take my hook, take the hook through one of the stitches on the back of that cluster, and then just pull that end through and then I'll turn it round and where you've got the three trebles going into that previous chain space, take the hook through those three, hook your yarn and then just pull that through mm -hmm. and then that kind of weaves it in and buries it into the work. And then just Tie off your off. ends and then that's nice and complete. It looks gorgeous. I love that pink, mm -hmm. I love it. I love the variegated yarns. Mm. This is a really nice, um, what, silver hint was it? Silver. Hint of silver, mm. beautiful. So the hint of silver then, uh, this is how you start any new color when you're making it a granny square, really, really simple to do. So you take the end of your yarn. I always go in, you can use any of those chain spaces. I automatically use the first one on the top row. Mm -hmm. That's just my go-to square. So this is what's called a chain space where you've made a chain stitch on that last round. Take your yarn through, just pull it through and then just knot it. Simple knot and that is secure. I'm then going to take this tail end and pull it to the left and sort of hold it there so that my trebles that I'm going to do into that chain space will secure that tail end so that's nicely buried so in the work. So rather than having to weave it in, you're kind of crocheting over the top of the uh, tail. Yeah, at the beginning. Job done. Yeah. So take your hook through the chain space, pull that yarn through, and there's your foundation stitch. And then we start again with chain three. One, two, three. And that creates that first mock treble, which is the first post for your new round. So I'm holding that tail end with my left hand yarn over, do a new treble and then another one and then a chain and you can see then at the back, if I turn that over, mm. you can see how that's already worked in. So I could chop that tail end off now because Great. it's already worked into your blanket. It just saves you weaving in all those ends doesn't yeah, it of when course you it does yeah you know because we joked didn't we about when we were sewing about the tail ends oh yeah and they do they get in the way don't they yeah, so yeah, if you yeah. can bury them in your when you're working with yarn then they're that's one job done yeah it's, it's two neat. for the price of one because yeah. you're working your treble but you're also burying your ends at the same time i love yeah. that yeah clever little technique so we just then carry on going round. What's nice about these granny squares are that there's lots of them. Keeps you, there's plenty to keep you occupied, plenty of work to do. But because they're only five rounds mm. each, you get the satisfaction of them being finished. Do you, yeah, do, yeah, do you, you get a win. Yes, exactly. You have a win. Yeah, you kind of think, oh, I'll finish that one. Yeah. And then you're on to the next one. Yeah, so there's yeah. plenty to do but it's nice that you've got some satisfaction as you're going. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I love that. I love that. Now then, <gasps> we have not one, but two projects from you today, don't we? Yes, Should you we do. Should we have a look at the second project? Yeah, please. Okay, that bundle, by the way, that rainbow bundle has now sold out, so I'm going to get rid of that. Going to get rid of that. <laughs> So now, it's going to take it away. Pop that one in the boot of my car. It's lovely, isn't it? Just slow. There we go. Don't try to take them off. <laughs> it's like Cracker Jack over there. It really is. Wait till I hand you a cabbage. Oh, 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 I'm oh. sorry, you're out of the game. It's on the floor. Well done. Amazing. Our Becky is just incredible. Now then, our second project is the Granny Square Crochet Cushion Cover. Now I'll just show it you um, on the front cover. Okay, but it's taking that Granny Square concept in a slightly different direction. And it's a really clever method actually. So it's kind of like a Granny Square, but it's set on point. Um, I'm gonna grab this cushion down Oh, look at this. So you've got 
kind of granny square on one side that is really cool love that and then look at the back oh now then I'd have serious questions about which way I was going to display this in mm. fact I might swap and change it depending on my mood love that so this is the granny square crochet cushion cover from Debbie Harris now the pattern on its own is 9.99 details are on screen it is. and we've also got some bundles of yarn to create your own version or potentially sort of increase your stash now then let's start off can we start off with the reds because these are absolutely gorgeous and I love this combo of reds and pinks now then so these are our most affordable bundle as well <clears throat> this is a great price 9.99 for these you're getting a ball of special DK in cream you get a special DK in claret a special DK in lipstick and then a you and me double knit that's that 80% acrylic 20% cashmere effect polyamide and this is in shade Sophia which is those gorgeous kind of shell pinks and kind of beiges all of those balls of yarn 400 grams for just 9.99 now Debbie in terms of that cushion cover Mm -hmm. Are we going to use all of that for one cushion cover? Oh, no. No, Could that will two? do... Oh, at least two. If not, oh, it'll be more. It'll Amazing. Be more. Maybe three. Wow. Maybe three. So we. Yes. So certainly a fiver per cushion cover mm. tops. Depends how big your cushion pad is, obviously. Okay, so we can change the but size. If it's, yeah, so you can just make your square as mm -hmm. big as you want to, to, to match to fit Perfect. that uh, cushion pad. That is brill. I absolutely love that combination of colours. Isn't it beautiful? That lovely warm cream, those shell pinks, <coughs> and then that gorgeous vibrant lipstick red and that deep claret. Lovely, 9 99 for that. Really affordable little bundle that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now then, uh, we've got a Brights collection a Brights collection. Now this is Colour Lab from West Yorkshire Spinners. Again this is a DK. <clears throat> um, this is actually British wool. So this is 100% British wool. Uh, it is... I'm looking and I'm thinking that is machine wash. 40 degrees. I would like to know that. Mm. That's really cool. What a great selection of colours. That is yummy. So you've got, uh, this is Coral Crush. Okay. Next up, we've got Harbour Blue. Okay. Next up, Bottle Green. And then to finish off, Silver Grey. That is beautiful really like that selection of colors now um, different price point because remember this is 100 percent british wool from west yorkshire spinners 17.99 but remember you're going to get at least two if not three crochet cushion covers out of this uh, bundle of yarn making each one about six pounds to make which is really good value and great fun and of course the great thing as well about using those four yarns is you could make each cushion cover look completely different mm -hmm. there'll be a non-matching matching set because you're still using the same colors that is beautiful as well the mm. feel is awesome really nice really yummy now <clears throat> our third and final bundle is from west yorkshire spinners and it is a yarn called bo peep now this is a little bit special. Love these colours. Now then, you're getting uh, four 50 gram balls here. So this is going to make you sort of one large uh, cushion cover. This is uh, Falkland Island wool 
a hundred percent Falkland Island wool. Now that's Falkland Island wool has been a bit of a buzzword for the last year or two mm. in knitting and crochet. Um, <coughs> Falkland wool, if you've never felt it off the Falkland breed of sheep, is exceptionally soft. So if you associate 100% um, wool with a certain scratchiness, shall we say, and you rather like the feel of acrylic or cashmere effect acrylic, but you would like to use a natural fibre, um, go for this one because it feels buttery soft. It is beautiful, but it is 100% Falkland wool. So you get um, 50 grams in the natural, you get 50 grams in dandelion. I completely want a tank top in that color or a sweater. Beautiful, I love that. Then you get 50 grams of duck egg. That's lovely, isn't it? Really beautiful. These are really gorgeous home decor colors, aren't they? And then the last one is called sand and you get 50 grams of that. I think that's a really beautiful combination. And this is a real premium yarn. Falkland wool is a real premium, premium. Um, look at how those colors go together. This is a little sample that Debbie's made up. That is gorgeous, isn't it? And of course, you've emphasized the duck egg mm -hmm. on this um, cushion by having those, those three rounds in duck egg. But of course, you could pick out any color you wanted mm. for that, couldn't you? Yeah, Or completely. indeed, just do the whole thing in like single rows. Yeah, that'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? I think that's divine. Really beautiful. Seventeen ninety nine for that bundle. Gorgeous. Right then, would you show us how we do this? So this is exactly the same method with your granny square. So you start off with your ring and then you're doing your trebles into it um, and then you make your um, cushion this well, whatever size your cushion pad is you literally will measure as you're working as okay. to how big that is if that makes sense yep. so can I just borrow that one Stuart, you certainly just to can. explain that a bit better so for example that's about a 13 inch cushion so I just imagine that the cushions on that angle so you would make your square to that width and length. So it's mm -hmm. just one square oh, okay. that size. So you just keep going until you've measured it to the size of the cushion pad. And then once you've got your square, it's then just folding it like an envelope at the back. So your okay. square would be on point, as Stuart said. And then you fold the corners into each other and clip them with quilting clips or you could pin them and then I'm going to show you how to do this stitch here it's a single crochet joining stitch which just joins those angles of that square granny square together to make that back so that you've got two different looks you've got your traditional granny square on the front but on an angle mm. and then on the back you've got this envelope sort of shape which creates this x in a different way so that you're crochet is running in different directions it's really cool it's a great design and it's really really simple Fab. just one granny square yeah yeah so i was going to show this on these i'm just going to show you how to join the squares together oh, because awesome. that's the same technique that would you you would use here exactly the same using a single crochet but it's a joining stitch mm -hmm. okay so i'll show you on this one because it's exactly the same technique so using in fact i'll use a different color here so that you can see it mm. now normally you would obviously use the same yarn so it's this contra um it just blends in but yeah. i'm going to use a different one so you can see what i'm doing but what i really like about it is it creates that ridge along yeah. the seam yeah um, which is all part of the design isn't it absolutely yeah so it's it's intentionally ridged as you say if you wanted to bury that seam then you could quite easily do that just by using a darning needle and sewing those together, mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. pieces. I like on this design, I've just made it so that bridge stands out, gives your work much more texture and finish. Okay, so when you are doing the, it's exactly the same technique, but obviously I'm showing you on these, you're gonna put them wrong sides facing. So wrong sides facing. So when you've got this on the back of the cushion, they're already wrong sides facing, if you like. So you would push the seams 
so that they're up like that so that you can work with them and then you take the end of your yarn pull it through the very corner of your granny square through the first one mm -hmm. and then do the same through the second one mm -hmm. and we're just going to knot those together tie a little knot and that secures them and that's the start of your stitching that you're going to make okay but then you open seam. them back out again or you well, keep them together well i'm just doing that to show ah, you I yeah see. i'm going to keep them together because it's easier then to see the stitches so when you've got your crochet granny squares like this if you just tip them towards you you can see it's almost like a knitting stitch yeah. i always call them little v's mm -hmm. like tiny little v shapes going in that direction each one of those is a stitch so if i put my hook through there there's two little posts there mm -hmm. that form part of that v that's the part of the end of that stitch that you're going to go into with your crochet hook mm -hmm. okay so obviously we're starting at this end and working across in this direction so make sure you've got plenty of working yarn here that's free take your hook through that chain space between those two clusters of three trebles in the corner and pull the yarn from the back so you've got one foundation stitch on your crochet hook like this mm -hmm. then you you're working them together but treat them as two separate pieces of work so you go through the first v-shape if you just tilt it towards you first v-shape on the one that's facing you and then the next one behind the top of that other treble mm -hmm. that's exactly behind it so on your hook at this point you've got the foundation stitch the two posts of the first piece the two posts of the second piece take your crochet hook yarn over and then pull that pit yarn through all of those five stitches mm -hmm. and that joins them together okay. so then we're going to go through the top one of those three the top of that v shape and the top of that stitch and you do every single stitch every, every single stitch yep. now yeah top but it's really clear and easy to see where they are when you come to a chain space you can just go through the chain space you don't have to go through the top of the mm -hmm. stitches pull the yarn from the back pull it through that stitch and then again through the top of each of those stitches so it looks like you've got loads of stitches on your needle which you have essentially but you're just going through them you're not doing anything with them you're just using them as a structure to crochet them together mm -hmm. i've reached now the next chain space so go through that yarn from the back pull it through and repeat just go through every single one of those trebles pull in your yarn just got a bit of the silver there let me just take that back because you don't want any of the silver yarn no. coming back through if you're obviously doing this with silver yarn the color it wouldn't have mattered actually but because you can see the contrast of the mm. color here it was important that i didn't have that showing so it's almost like you're stitching the two squares together but you're using your crochet hook to pull the thread through aren't you yeah rather than a darning needle yeah, yeah. very clever uh, yeah and, and it's and it's a single crochet stitch mm -hmm. so yeah it's um just gives it that different finished look yeah. to your work um, again it's just doing things that are unique and different to other patterns because mm. you know we like to do something that's different don't mm, we definitely and then i'm almost at the end you can see how quick that is then now i'm at the end i'm going to go through those chain spaces in the corner take the hook through pull the yarn from the back and pull it through so then i've finished that piece of work yeah cut that's off, really neat i like that cut off the yarn take my hook through that stitch and pull that through or yep. you can do that with your fingers and then you just pull that tight and that's yep. finished then when i put, separate them that is what it creates so this yes. ridge even though that's in the bright pink you can't actually see it no because the ridge is created by those two crochet squares mm -hmm. coming together yeah it's those stitches there that kind of push up like this and then if i lay it flat you can see that nice row of pink yeah yeah so i really if, like that contrast. i was gonna say I would, if i was doing it again i would probably use a contrast yarn yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then you can just see it that side as well just gives it a little bit of 
flavour, doesn't it? Yeah, that? it does. I think, I that think looks it's really, really nice. smart. I think it's really smart. I've just um, just about to release a uh, um, knit along cable knit along oh, blanket. Oh, I love cable. Where you knit like sort of wide bands of a single type of cable. Well, yeah. There's a couple of it where you combine two, but it's all quite simple and easy. Yeah. And then you crochet them together with double crochet. Oh, okay. And but what? What I use for each of the different colour variations is five different colourways, but I actually used a contrast yarn for each oh, okay. of those joining. Oh. So it actually adds a little band of yeah. colour yes. between each section, you know. So I suppose you can do the same, can't yeah. you? You can have it blended, you can have it contrasting. Yeah. yeah. I love the yeah. join. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to weave in those ends, your yarn your ends, yes, please. rather than as before I use my crochet hook. So I've got my darning needle, push your yarn through, and then I'm going to turn the work upside down, if you like, right side facing down, wrong side facing up, and then you just literally take your, that tail end and you weave it into the work. Now, because this is a contrast colour, I'm going to weave across the top of the stitches there on that treble. But because it's a silver, I'm going to go underneath so it pops out there. And then I'm going to, because this is the same colour yarn, and obviously you want, you want to bury this in the work, you don't yeah, want to yeah. see this. So just do a few stitches and then take the yarn through that last stitch mm -hmm. just to kind of knot it off. Yeah. And then take it through those bottom of those three trebles, pull it through, and then you can safely snip that off. Yeah. And that now won't work its way out so you won't have any loose ends. And then I'll just do the same this end. And as I said earlier, I always, always bury my threads as I go along. I can't yeah. bear to have it finished and then have to go and do it. I like yeah. to oh, do it gosh, as yeah. I go. Do it as you go along. Definitely. There would be something quite <laughs> soul destroying, I yes. think. If you got to the end and you'd got a hundred. Oh. Well, we've all been there, haven't we? Knitters and, and crocheters. Yeah. We've all maybe done that fair isle project or that crochet project where we didn't do that and we didn't enjoy weaving in the ends yeah i don't like it at all no. i like it when there's just one or two like that i yeah, find yeah. it quite nice because yeah, yeah. it, it breaks it up a bit of course it does but to do a whole blanket for would just yeah, yeah. yeah make you want to cry wouldn't it it really would it really would it's like washing up as you go when you're cooking something yeah exactly that's yeah. what i do i exactly. wash up as i go and then it's nice and finished dave will yeah. do the whole meal tell me about and it and leaves it tell all there me about and then i'm it. walking i think i couldn't face that now bomb site i do it as i go winner yeah um, yeah. So you would do exactly that same technique on the back of the granny square crochet ah, cushion. Ah, so that's crocheted together exactly as well. Exactly the same. So I've done exactly the same method and then when I got to the centre, just done a few um, blanket stitches to secure that centre. Mm -hmm. You could put a nice button on there of course. That would be nice. Wanted, and then that would make that a nice finished side. Mm. But as you said Stuart, neither of those is really a back or a front. No it isn't, it, it gives you a two-sided cushion doesn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. It's reversible really. Yeah. yeah. Now can I ask you, would you do a little special extra for me? Oh. Would you just show us how you do the tassels? Yes absolutely. I do love I love any kind of pom-pom, tassel, trim. Mm -hmm. I just think they're gorgeous and life is happier with tassels and pom-poms, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. It's yeah. all about, it's a bit like my nails. They, they just make me happy. Yeah. And the same with a tassel. Me too. Gorgeous, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. So there's lots of different ways, as always, of doing tassels. I do, you can buy tassel makers, can't you? Little tassel you contraptions. Can. Yeah. I'm more of a traditional... Wrap the yarn round your hand. Round your fingers. Cut it in half yep. type of person. Yeah. So you take your yarn and I'm just using the width of my hand here. So depending on how thick you want your tassel, so this one isn't very big, but you might want a really big chunky one. So you just- I want big and chunky. Big and, you would do, wouldn't you? you would, <laughs> I knew you were gonna ask for big and chunky. So I'm just going to wrap that yarn around my fingers or my hand more yep. to get a big and chunky tassel. Let's you want that. more? Oh. I'm back in Oliver now, aren't I? Please, sir. You, yeah, you're very theatrical, aren't you, Stuart? <laughs> I could see you on the West End. Oh, no. What would you be? No. Well, I don't know. Well, um, with your beautiful singing voice, why not? <laughs> you're wasted. <laughs> 
Could you I not? would, if I could take any part at all, mm. <coughs> I would play Edna Turnblad oh, in Hairspray. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. That'd I'd be play good. Edna Turnblad in, in Hairspray. She's just a teenager. I'd, but you see, I, I love the original John Waters film. I remember right. going with my mates from school. We were doing our A-levels and it was released in cinemas and we all went to the cinema and watched it and we had so much fun. I've always mm. loved it. Mm. It is fun, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So once I'm happy with how many strands I've got, I didn't count them. I suppose <coughs> if you're making four, yeah. you would count them because you want them to be even. Yes. I would want them to be even. So do as you say rather than as you do. So I would count them. <laughs> I'm obviously demonstrating for Stuart because he wants a big chunky one. But if I was, when I'm doing this cushion myself, I would count. So I would go over maybe 20 times. Yep. So they're all the same size. And then, this is a scary part, and if you've ever made pom-poms, it's very similar. Take it off your hand, and then I've held those um, that yarn together yep. at one point. That's where, or two points, really, and I'm going to cut one of them, which always... Do you want an assistant? Well, hang on. No, because I've got to show you, Stuart, how you do it on your own. Oh, OK. Because we won't have a beautiful Stuart. At... Oh, you look quite sad. Do you want to help? You do, don't you? Come on. Come on. Can I at least occupy the same space? <laughs> Come on, Jim. I've got into teaching mode, did it? Stay over there. Stay over there. Sit down. So I'm going to do this. Look, I'm taking a piece of yarn and I'm just going to knot. Yeah. So that those are held together. So that if you haven't got a glamorous assistant. Well, I mean, I, in fairness, I am just standing here watching. I'm not exactly assisting. Well, only because I told you off. <laughs> <laughs> just for being. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Right. So now I've secured those there. Yeah. I'm going to keep those two or three. I don't know which one's which now. Look, every time you come over, I go wrong. Oh, that's it. You put me I'm off. the whipping boy. You put me off. Yeah. So now I'm going to take my little scissors. I would probably use bigger scissors, but these are doing the job adequately yeah. fine. And I'm going to snip them in half. Make sure they're all snipped because you don't want any loops in a tassel. No, you don't snip them off that would be a different kind of thing they would it would be a a loop wouldn't it <laughs> and then so you've got your little tassel mini wig. there <laughs> mini it does wig. look like a mini wig it doesn't does. it you could put that on a on a doll well, it looks a bit like <laughs> Millie Dill's hair it's like it's like where are we did, going didn't with we this? didn't we see so many so <laughs> Did we? Mm. What? what we, mm. Did we actually see anyone with mm. one of those? No, at the at Commonwealth Games. Oh, All did the we? youngsters. Charlie and I oh. went out for dinner the other night. This lad came in, wow, and it was all like wispy and bright mm. ginger and, and it was like, wow, mm. the moustache is really in. Well, you've got one yourself. Well, it's part of a beard. Oh, is, is yeah. the beard Oh, I can't the... imagine me with a, just a moustache, can you imagine? Is the, is the moustache group and the beard group, they're two separate, mm. we don't talk about it. It's young people moving away from the older generation, isn't it, and saying we're not like you. Yeah, mm. my eldest son's got a moustache. I see. Yeah, he loves it. Is it beautiful? Not yeah. really. Is he, not, like? yeah. is he watching? Right, so what Probably. do you do next? He may well be. So now I'm going to take those two long ends there. <laughs> I'm going to bring them down. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling very cack handed here. But you put me right off talking about moustaches and beards. <laughs> then I'm going to bring them down and then I'm going to twist them and bring them round to make a loop. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to bring them down, oh, I don't know, half an inch. Yeah. And loop them round. So you t take that, loop that round. I'm making more hard work of this than it need be because I've got Stuart breathe. Sorry, way. but essentially you're making a sort of chunky head for your tassel. Absolutely. So there's that way of doing it, mm -hmm. which is essentially it. Yeah. Which is lovely look. And yeah. then you could just sew that on with the yarn. You yeah. can also give it a bit of a bit of a haircut. Bit of a haircut. So just trim that up so it's nice and even. Nice and crisp and even. Yeah. Like a bit that. like having a haircut for a job interview. <laughs> is that the only time you have your haircut when oh, you go gosh, to no. no, I get my haircut every like three, four oh, weeks. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, do, doing the job that I do, no one wants me scruffy. No, we like to see you looking on Pristine. point. So there's this one. That's yep. a nice tassel in that way. 
This one here, if I just undo it, I'll yeah. show you. It's just same technique, wrapped it around my hands, but they're just tied in the center mm -hmm. as that one was. And then I just push them through that loop in the corner. Yeah. And then push the little strands at the end. See, obviously they, they were longer at the time because mm. I cut them after. Mm. And just pull it through. Just knot it onto the... So that's straight away knotted onto yeah, the cushion. Yeah, 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 so I love it. They're probably a bit more secure, really. But I, I do like the look of a more traditional. They look the same, but that's more of a knot mm. and that's a sort of knotted end, if you like. Perfect. Okay. Love it, love it. Perfect. You've made me very happy, Debbie. Oh, because of the crochet blanket? Or well, the, showing the, the tassel whole... as well. Oh, just, good. Just for being here, just for just being for you. Being... No, but also as well, I do think sometimes we assume that even the simplest thing, everyone knows how to do yeah. that. And I think it's really good sometimes, or even just, you know, maybe like you never even consider putting tassels on things. No. But there you go, it's another technique. It's just a reminder yeah. that they're fun and effective. And quite easy. You don't always need all the contraptions oh, to do it. Exactly. You can just do it yourself. And it's something to get kids involved with as oh, well, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. They, you know, they might not be ready to do the crochet, but helping doing the tassel. Yeah. Love it. Such fun. Debbie, you've been such fun yourself. Thank it's been a you, wonderful and you. morning. And you. Thank you for inspiring us all with Thank everything you. you do. Thank you very much. And do you know when you're back? Uh, 26th of September. 26th of September. I'll be back. Get it in your diary. <laughs> we are going to go and have a look at the menu now and see what's coming up on the show tomorrow, now at 8 a.m. Vix is here with bags galore at 9am. Oh look, I'm guessing. It's Christmas Fabrics. It's my brand new uh, range of fabrics for Christmas. It is Cross Stitch Christmas. So I'll be launching this brand new fabric tomorrow um, with lots of demos and lots of ideas for you. Now at 10am, Sally Ann Harrison is here with her Liberty Dress Quilt. This is a stunner. Have a look at her Instagram. It is so beautiful. At 11am, I'm going to be doing the Moda Confetti Stars Quilt. Uh, that is a beautiful quilt using the promenade range that Debbie was using today. And then at 12 o'clock, uh, Sally Ann Harrison is back with her Liberty needle case and pleat cushion. Two separate projects there. Have a great afternoon, won't you? And thank you for staying with us. Um, we will look forward to seeing you bright and early 8 a.m. tomorrow. And, uh, you know, this afternoon, have fun, enjoy what you do and take care of yourself and each other. Um, we're going to do Hobby Makers menu before we go. Here it is, one o'clock, Collop are back with their amazing E-Mark Create portable printers and brand new bundles. At two o'clock, it's the Christmas sale with Crafter's Companion. At 3 p.m., Neo Little Stamp Collection from Collop. Uh, at four o'clock, it's more from Crafter's Companion and their Christmas deals. And then at 5 p.m., Collop are back and the portable E-Mark printer. Okay, have a great afternoon. Enjoy yourselves. Make sure you do a little bit of something crafty. Have fun. See you tomorrow.